disappointed in every one of you. I'm sorry, I don't mean to offend you. I'm disappointed in every one of you. I kiss you on the mouth. No, no, I'm not, I'm not cool with that. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. One more time. I'm disappointed in every one of you. I mean, I'm dealing with degenerate animals. I'm, I'm disappointed in every one of you. Yo, yo. Disappointed in every one of you. All right, all right, come on. Honestly, I can't do it, man. I'm, I'm disappointed in every one of you. Let me tell you why. It's gonna be all right, Nicky. Go ahead, go ahead, shoot, shoot, shoot. Just kill a little fucking man. What are you going to do about it? Hey, because you got nothing. You don't got a thing. Hey, because you got nothing. You got nothing. I want to get out. I want to get out of this rat hole. I want to get online. I need BDA Boxing. Welcome everybody to another Boxing Podcast, broadcasting to you live from the true north. It's your good friend Mr. BDA and I'm glad everybody could be on board for this one. Fellas, today we've got a fantastic show for you today because I mean we're going to be talking about delving into a subject that might disturb some people, but it's not about complaining. We're really going to try to dig some answers here and, and get some, uh, some, get some uh, resolution here to a big problem that's been plaguing our so beloved sport here so we're gonna get all down to that don't forget before we get down to the business fellas well actually before we get down to the fun let's get the business out of the way don't forget you can check us out on Spreaker, iTunes, Spotify the whole shebang if you want to donate a couple of shekels our way you can wire them via the super chat it's always better it's always better if you use the membership program join that one that way you get more bang for your buck Remember, YouTube takes a cut. You're giving YouTube 30% of your hard-earned money. Why'd you give it to us? <laughs> it's a little bit better. But listen, that's not important. The most important thing is that you continue to like, subscribe, spread the BDA gospel. There's a lot of uninitiated out there. The unwashed masses need to learn about this show. So guys, make sure you do that. Big shout out to everybody in the chat. John Gonzalez. John, thank you for helping me out last night on the UFO show. Shout out to Fluffy Toasters 89 Mike DLL, Iceman, Official Scorecard, Boxing Bray, Green Reaper. Many more people to come, I'm sure. Fellas, thank you for joining us. Really appreciate it. We got Jimmy and Gonzalo already dropping by. Fellas, today's subject, what's wrong with American boxing? It's falling apart. And what can we do to fix it, if anything at all? So guys, trap in. It's going to be bumpy, his, this one. You guys there? Yes. Can oh, you hear right, me? Good, good. I can hear you, man. I can hear you. I think I heard Gonzalo too there. Okay. All right, fantastic. Yeah, I'm putting the dogs in the corral, back we're, in the cage. <laughs> we're putting our knees. Give me the, yeah. That's right. And hey, by the way, we got the special guest dropping by, Steve Kim. Good to hear from him. I Steve, can you hear me. Oh, we can Steven. hear you, man. What's up? Thank you for being Guys, on, man. Guys, it's up, been brother? too long. I, I felt as though I owed you a call. Uh, I got about a half hour here. I, I, I was really piqued by your your uh title how do we fix american boxing you want me to mm. give you your uh the answer right now Please. fire away you can't it's over there are no what? solutions you gotta be kidding me man bottom line no yeah. i don't think there's any fixing it it's the it's god's honest truth i think we just gotta enjoy what we have mock what we get and accept our fate it's over and i, I i'm being a little bit facetious but I don't think post Canelo that there's going to be another star. The guys don't fight enough. They get paid an exorbitant amount, which actually inhibits other fights from happening. As we're seeing with Crawford and Spence, the business is not sound. And we have fighters that have less than 25 fights or less than 25 years old who have an, a, an incredible sense of entitlement because the business allows it. And so these guys could never actually build up a real fan base to become bigger than what they're ever going to be. I really think post Canelo Alvarez, we are not going to have another crossover star. That is a free, free, free picture. 
do you do you think steve uh, um do you think honestly brother it has to almost come it almost has to fucking burn down and yeah. if there's any life left into it it has to regrow because it's almost yeah. like trying to fix a dam that's so old so crooked like there's only so many times you can patch it before that's what you're dealing with and everything you just said is so true and um if there's anything i mean if this week this past weekend if what they're saying i mean mike woods heard under fifty thousand or right around yeah. fifty thousand and mm. um well, uh, Rick Glacier is saying seventy-seven thousand in the far as wild. I was saying I'd, I'd be surprised if it hit a hundred. I caught some shit for that, but I'm, you know, again, I'm a realist, and I think that's that's the American heavyweight champion. But that's also putting on a fight that shouldn't have been on a pay per view. And I think that's the fans, the economy, all these things. I think you're one hundred percent correct in what you're saying. And I got to say, dude, man, you shit, you're killing it on Fearless, dude. I never miss an episode. You guys, I, it's become like my favorite show. Oh, Everybody well, on that, the whole, the whole cast, man, Delaney, Bryce, I mean, Malika. I, I mean, seriously, it's a good show, bro. Good work on you know, that. I just wanted to say the that. Issue, guys, I don't look. I want to make this very clear. I will always have a love and affinity for boxing. I put too much time into it, but do I? Do I really care the way I did? Do I have that passion the way I once did? No. I think it's very mockable. I laugh now. Anything that happens. I go, thank you. You give me something I could write about or talk about. It's like every single bit of news, like last night with Crawford with this Black Prime, I don't get angry at it. I laugh. It's, it, it's like it can't be taken seriously. And so now I think of every news story and every fight that comes aboard, I think of it as an ingredient to the next meal I'm going to cook to feed myself and to get myself paid. It's over. It's no longer a serious sport. You can't take it seriously. I don't think it's fixable. As Ock Nation News says on his videos about crime in the cities, there are no solutions. We're going to just have to kind of accept our fate. And the ironic thing is with Crawford Spence, um, this is what happens when you create an unsustainable market and then you try to actually make the fight. Well, guess what? You're trying to jump into a bed that you made that is full of thorns and roses. Because I will say this. Al Heyman has every right not to lose money either. But he helped, he helped create this environment where a lot of fighters were overpaid. It was all about monopolizing or blackballing certain fighters that are on the wrong side of the street. So now that Bob Arum, who, by the way, are we still blaming Bob Arum for this? Is hmm. no longer an easy scapegoat. The veil has been completely, completely uh, ripped off. And we're thinking, huh. Maybe it wasn't Bob Arum. I mean, never mind. He actually did the Fury Wilder fight twice. And now you have fighters who are completely overpaid, who are sitting for months and years at a time. I mean, think about this, guys. Um, out of the two Charlo brothers, they fought combined one time. Okay, and I actually like them because they're exciting. They're son of a bitches. They talk shit. But if you look at the Ring Magazine top 10, I think about half of those fighters who are theoretically our best fighters in the world, they never fight. They they fought one time or less this year. How in the world are we marketing this? And I don't think anything's changing. I mean, that's a dreary picture you're painting. I got to tell you, and I, I remember it's not the first time you've Thank said you. it now. <laughs> well, listen, it is a dream picture. And I hope, listen, unfortunately, I think you're going to be right because you said this in another episode way back. I got to ask you, if this indeed comes to pass, will people be able to point the genesis, the beginning of the end, as it were? When did this all start? 2015, the PBC, when, when they basically tried to do a scorched earth policy and monopolize all the television dates, and they tried to run everyone out of the business, and then, to, then 2018, when the, the zone came, and so then everyone was in a position, and Crawford was actually a beneficiary of this, where everyone that was in the boxing game paired up with the network or a platform had to then overpay their own guys to secure programming for their networks or their streaming service. So it created three or four different leagues of boxing. And then what happened is it's a very unsustainable uh, type of market when everyone's making so much money that you can't even keep them busy. I will say this about Canelo. He's the only guy that actually shows a real value that's tangible. Because if you look at his gate receipts and his pay-per-view performances, you could say, wow, that guy's a real business. 
everyone else is just going by a perceived value or a perception. Um, and so I don't know. I, I, I look at this business now. It's like every once in a while, by accident, we are going to have some fights that we like and some good fights are going to happen. We still have some real talent. But on a week-to-week, month-to-month, year-to-year basis, we talk more about fights that can't happen, won't happen, for certain reasons. We all know why. And then we wonder why we can't get Spence Crawford. I wrote a story a couple weeks ago, and I said, guys, Terrence Crawford's now 35. The other guy's 33. When Ray Leonard and um, Tommy Hearns fought, they were 25 and 23. I know. I, you, I just, I'm just telling you, you can tell me it's a different era, but it's still boxing, and it's really a shame. I don't think anything's going to uh, really change for a while until, like Jimmy said, we may have to burn this whole thing down. As Brian Billick once said about the instant replay rule in the NFL, time to blow the whole thing up. Time to have a complete market reset. Time to have a bubble. And then I would say make fighters fight and just treat them just like, hey, let the strong survive. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah, Steve, do you think if um, my, I say I, I try to be an optimist in some way, I, I think if some like money or somebody like Dana White, say, because Al's getting older. And listen, this, and it's the date, I want to say, on the on the tombstone, you could say May 15, 2015. That's when the PBC was launched to with what you said. They originally had their own belts made. They were planning on ah. doing a UFC style. They And if they would have taken Canelo from Golden Boy that would have taken out Canelo. They had all the day. So, and then you could see something was up when he was just placing these unimaginative, boring fights, mismatches with no geographical relevance to the fighters. Like he wasn't building anything, and it's like this is odd. And you saw what it was. Even Al Bernstein admitted it on Twitter. It was it was a takeover. That's all he was trying to do was flood the market so nobody could compete, and okay. therefore he'd pick up all the scraps. When that failed, then he didn't give a shit anymore. Now it was just trying to stay out of court. But um, you know, from the money back. But he did this at HBO too. HBO boxing. For when I'm and um, I've heard you talk on this too that you've been told that he he was so toxic there that the the network didn't actually survive him even after he left because he was the one who pushed the tribalization between them and Showtime, and um, that's been his mo and. Until he leaves. But anyways, what I was going with, do you think if Dana White was to come in and throw some money at it and, and say, fuck it, I don't coddle guys, I match them, you think that'd be the only saving chance? Jimmy, here's the problem. And uh, this is where the it, it is a little bit more pure capitalism. But the UFC is not necessarily a monopoly, but they control, uh, I would say, at least, what, 85% of the marketplace when it comes to American MMA. Cause it's like NASCAR. They're not the only racing circuit in America, but when I think of race car driving in our country, I think of NASCAR. Okay. Yep. It's kind of like that. They have a large concentration of talent underneath their umbrella. Boxing will always have rivals. The only difference is at least when King and Aram hated each other, like Tom and Jerry, they made fights. They absolutely made fights when they had to. Uh, when it really suited them economically. Here, um, you have these network deals that are exclusive. So if you're on ESPN and you had to re-sign Vasil Lomachenko and Terrence Crawford back in 2018 to some really nice deals, at least from their perspective, you were never really going to have the interest of taking them to another network in a co-promotion. That is the reality. They were kind of like what Sopranos or The Wire was for HBO. They are your Hmm. particular property. They are your piece of programming a couple times a year. So the the issue is, would a Dana White figure work in boxing? Well, if he had 90% of the talent under contract with no Eddie Hearn, no Bob Arum, no Al Heyman, no Oscar De La Hoya. Yeah, but see, that's why it's kind of apples to oranges. But this, this again, shows you, it's so funny, some of these uh, journalists think they're being like these great activists, because they'd say, well, this is what a UFC fighter's making compared to Tyson Fury, and there's always like that thing, like, they, they're so proud of themselves for doing that, and I'm like, yeah, and you know what's funny? As a consumer, I don't care. The UFC seems to be giving their fans a much better product on a consistent basis. Guys, let's go back to what I told you for the last couple of years. I thought the biggest fundamental problem with Spence Crawford is that based on what they were making previously leading into this, Mm -hmm. that fight needed to do 
a certain amount of pay-per-view buys. And I would ask people on Twitter, do you think he even does a half million buys at $80 a pop? Most people said no. And I said, well, if that's the case, you got a problem because you're not going to be able to satisfy both ends. That's the reality of it. But when you over... See, here's the thing. If you were only paying them a, a million, five, two million, you know, something more in line with the reality, this deal could have been done very easy. But when guys like Terrence Crawford is getting $6 million for for Sean Porter, a fight that only did about 125 to 150,000 pay-per-view buys, you, you know the way a fighter thinks, guys. They're thinking, wow, for the fight with Errol Spence, I'm going to probably get 10 to 15. But the math never worked out. Hmm. Well, it's interesting because you said that months ago, I, I forget how much time ago it was, but it, it was almost a year. Maybe, maybe it was a year. I got to ask you, what was going through your mind when you were on Twitter with that in the back of your mind and you see all these people saying, oh, sources say the fight's on for November. Sources say it's on for December. What was going through your mind? Um, I knew for a fact uh, Mike Coppinger back in June, when he first said that they were on the verge of a deal, I knew for a fact um, that that was not true. Here's what I believe happened the past couple of months. And I'm not saying that Terrence Crawford is blameless in any of this. Hmm. But in my opinion, there was a coordinated attack or an attempt to leverage Terrence Crawford to take an unfavorable deal that he did not want through the media, through certain campaigns and certain leaks. Okay? I believe they tried to paint him into a corner. They tried to make him into the bad guy that was being unreasonable. Now, you can still believe that. That's just my opinion. But when, when certain media members had certain attacks with certain agendas, I said, mm, that's not true. And look... Here, this is why I think people are jumping overboard. We have to keep this in mind. When when Terrence Crawford fought Sean Porter last year, that basically fulfilled his WBO mandatory. The WBO ruled, okay, since from the day of November 20th, that's the last time he fought, I was there. The WBO ruled you now have 18 months till we will call another mandatory defense. And right now that'd be Virgil Ortiz. So... It, when it was clear November 19th was not going to happen, Crawford probably said, you know what, I'm not taking a whole year off. I'm not taking 2022 and just being dormant. So he had to get a tune-up fight. So I wouldn't completely close the door yet because he has till May or June of 2023 to make that fight with Spence before he has to move on one way or the other. I think this was his way of saying, look, I'm not going to get ring rust. But now Errol Spence is saying, wow, man, you know, I'm, I've been holding this weight for a long time. Right. You have been. So what? I, I mean, so there is a little bit of gamesmanship going on here. But again, I wouldn't completely close the door on the fight yet until those mandatories are due. But although it's going to be interesting to see now what happens with Spence, because I think Amanda Stanionis, a really tough guy, he may have dibs on that uh, one of those mandatory spots for Spence's belts. What a shit show. That's all I can say about this. I mean, thank God for other fighters, Isn't man. Isn't that great? <laughs> I mean, thank God for other fighters who aren't uh, into this type of stuff. But let me ask you this, man. I remember you and Montoya back when you had the other podcast and you were talking about when the PBC started. Episode by episode, they started losing or they started cutting off things. No more Sugar Ray Leonard. No more playing the Hans Zimmer music. No more PBC belt that they scrapped that from the get go. Are you surprised How about that they're the still around? Remember the what? The spaceship scoreboard. Remember the <laughs> the blue and red tiles, the Bloods and the Crips and the locker. You know. <laughs> oh, yeah, and on. remember the Hans Zimmer music? Wasn't that melodic? Wow. Yeah. Talk about some wasted money. <laughs> but yeah, are you surprised Half looking a back at it now? Dollars. Jeez, Luis. Are you surprised that they're still around though? To a certain degree, I am. Look, this, this much was clear. Their hostile takeover on the rest of boxing, it never took off. They didn't have enough of the blue chip talent. If you go back to 2015 and you, let's say you did the top 10 to 15 fighters in the world pound for pound, they didn't have most of them. They really didn't. And there was a precipitous drop in their ratings early on. Even when they were on CBS and NBC, ESPN, in about three shows said, okay, this ain't this ain't for us. 
and then there were lawsuits filed. And once that happened, then it became about just holding on, and they tried to actually do some real promotions. But I truly think that once the takeover attempt did not work, and it was clear that Golden Boy, who at that point had Canelo, top rank being top rank, and you still had matchroom with Eddie Hearn, that they got themselves into a hole. I I believe it's almost impossible to promote over 250 fighters the way they did. And over the course of time, fighters were sidelined. They had to get in line to get fights. They weren't active. And I don't think the quality of fights were really all that good. And I think there became a PBC fatigue. And outside their hardcore cultists that waved the PBC, see pom-poms everyone else kind of just moved on with the business i, I look mm. pbc could have been a really good thing for boxing if they just would have actually worked with people and you could say that for all the promoters in the sport of boxing but that simply is not realistic but yeah i mean pbc i don't know where they go now i'm sure you guys have heard the reports of the showtime demise what's going to happen with paramount plus but it, did you see the ratings for the fundura fight on showtime wow yeah, there are very horrible. few people watching those broadcasts. Three hundred thousand peak. That's yeah, and I that's think the terrible. average is like one hundred seventy-five or two hundred. It's not good. Yeah, I average one hundred seventy-five. It peaked, I think, once for a little bit. Yeah, that's those numbers are atrocious. Thirty-five million homes showtimes in, and yeah, I did bring that up on the show about the the apps and the stories, and it's getting louder. So, and the fact, like I said on the show too, that um the Espinosa's boss, head of programming, just up and walked out. That's never a good sign when you see executives at that magnitude just quitting their jobs. No, and, and so I don't know where they're going. And the other thing that's really interesting, guys, if you look, because it's like you always have to work for the present but build for the future. PBC has not signed any real prospects of no... Hmm the last five years. And and I've said this, I've written about it. The the best prospects in America, the overwhelming amount have gone to top rank. Whether it's Bruce Carrington, Keyshawn Davis, now Emilio Vargas, Jared Anderson, Raymond Murataya. Uh those guys are all going to top rank and they're gonna start doing other type of shows to try to showcase them. And so that's this is the thing that gets me is like people make it sound like Keith Thurman against uh, Spence is like this great fight. Thurman's had one good victory in five years. I, I, I mean, I know some people recognize him. What has he done in the last five years that that warrants him being some sort of elite fighter nowadays? Uh, I mean, bringing the food I'm, over in Mount Everest. Yeah, with yeah, the Himalayan yeah, salt one. Uh, Steve Kim, I was going to mention to you. So, what do you think the problem is with uh, the PBC? They're they're naive. Um, they think they're better than everybody else, or they have no clue what they're doing. Moving well, forward, well, probably a little bit of, of all of that. I think here's the problem: when you start, when you go into a business and you don't have sound business principles, in other words, let's just sign everybody, overpay a lot of people, and try to drive everybody out. That's not going to work. It's not. They, they no. tried to create a monopoly, and once that failed relatively quickly, well, you're stuck with a lot of fighters that you really don't want, and you're stuck with these exorbitant contracts um, that you don't really want to fulfill. And so that's the issue. And I, I don't know where PBC is going. I don't particularly care. Ooh. Um, I don't. I really don't. I mean, I'll be honest with you. Every time a PBC show is on, I have to watch it in theory, but it, it really is a chore. Um, you just kind of get through it for the most part. Um, yeah. You know, it's funny, guys. Last week, I was at a, a bar, a sports bar in, at L.A. Live, right across the street from the uh, uh, Staples Center. It's called Tom's Watch Bar. And they actually have a lot of the boxing matches and the uh, um, UFC. And it's interesting because they don't actually charge a cover charge. They just let you in. And if you just buy a few drinks and some food... You get to enjoy a great night out. And so, and it's built like an, uh, Las Vegas sports bar. So you got all sorts of screens. And so there was all sorts of college football, the baseball playoffs were on. And I was there specifically to watch everything. And so, you know, the Devin Haney fight was on, on one screen, then the Wilder fight, and obviously all the college football I cared about. 
guys, I can honestly tell you, until Wilder literally threw that right hand that knocked Kalanius into the next world realm, nobody was watching the cards. No. The really, it was like an afterthought. It was very oh. evident that everyone was there for the Dodger game and college football. Well, listen, I listen. Like, before, wow. I, I know you. I know you got to go. So, so I just want to. It didn't I know surprise you... me, guys, that that pay per view bombed. <laughs> well, I mean, come on, it's, it's fucking a uh, tune up for seventy bucks. Uh, but, who who was gonna get that, man? But I wanted to ask yeah, you, man, because I know you got. I yeah. know you got to go soon. But you gave Haney his props in your column this week. But I gotta ask you, the the clinching. There's too many people here in this yeah. YouTube scene, Steve, condoning that. And, oh, well, you know, the, the, the main justifications I hear are it's the referee's fault. It's the other guy's fault for not being able to get out of that clinch. It's part of boxing. Where do you stand on that? Um, unfortunately, until we get some referees with some real guts, and I've told some of these guys, you guys do not enforce the rules. I've, I've gotten into it with Jack Reese, who I really like. I said, Jack, how come you don't ever call clinching? And they give Ooh. me a million, and I just say, no, just go to the rule book. I, I'm not asking you to create a new rule. Just follow. The, there, there was a fight a long time ago. It was between, I believe, Victor Ortiz and Andre Berto, and they were refereed by the name of Keith Hughes. He flat out, I think, penalized, um, or maybe it was Louis Colazzo, Andre Berto. It was one of those fights where Keith Hughes, in the second round, took a point away from Berto for clinching, and it opened up the whole fight. And I said, I wish every referee would do that. Somewhere along the way, that became an accepted tactic, even though it breaks the rules. Could you imagine jumping off sides in football every play and never calling it? It's ridiculous. And look, I think Devin is skilled, but at the same time, does he clinch a lot? Yes. And there's got to be a guy good enough that breaks through the clinches, as I like to say, punch through it, instead of cooperating and just getting through it and making Devin move his hands. Because Teddy Atlas talks about this for years. You allow yourself to be clinched. But I think exactly. it happens so often that fighters start to do it subconsciously without even knowing, you know. Um, but again, when fighters only fight once every eight, nine months, how can they how can they possibly develop their skills, Jimmy? They can't. Seriously. They can't, Steve. We, you know that, dude. I mean, but 25 years old, man, you got, oh, man, I can't stress enough. And you don't want to sound like that dude. It's, well, back in my day. But it, well, it's so true. Jimmy, you know what I'm mean? It's, it. it's yeah, exactly. Yeah, people, you know, guys, right? I love when people say, well, you're, you're old. I, say, I don't give a shit. I don't oh, know. I know. I, you're right. I, all these other guys are ass kissers who want to play nice. They want to say the politically correct thing. And people, well, you're old and you think that way. And you know what I say? Fuck yeah, I do. What? You're not changing my mind. It. Right? I don't give a shit. We, we need to start being more honest. Like, you know, I talked about it on with Jason Whitlock a couple days ago. Just because an athlete says, well, I want to bring awareness to it. I have the right to say, yeah, and I completely disagree with you. And so if it's wrong for me to think that fighters who have less than 30 fights in their early 20s should fight more than once every eight months, it's okay. You can disagree with me. You can dislike me. It doesn't matter. <laughs> That's just my exactly. opinion. You're not going to change it. I love Boots Ennis. He's fought all of four minutes this year. Tell me how that helps him. Ridiculous. I know, and I, Steve. Believe me, I co I come on here and I'm constantly like I'm always like I'm. I think I'm just too cynical because I come on here and I try not to complain. But again, because we we were raised and we saw the sport at a different time and where guys fought, you, you there was something wrong if they fought three times a year in the beginning. Like until you won that title, even if it was a titleist, you would three four times a year they would fight. It just and to see this and then the, like you said the attitude and then not only that, which just like, I can't even, I go on under Twitter, I have to do it in little spurts because just the, it's becomes even more toxic than I thought it could be. But it's now these guys just trying to okay it. And I think there's just bitter people living vicariously through these fighters. So they feel like it's going to be a moral victory if they go on and just try to own somebody on Twitter. And I'm like, what the fuck are we doing? Like, yeah, fight I mean, the well, fights. Jimmy, uh, the best part of Golovkin Canelo 3 because those guys put on a very high price sparring session. That that was shameful what took place. Let's just be honest about it. Um, but I went to the the uh, the the bar next to the elevators at the MGM Grand. Miguel Cotto happened to be there with a couple of my friends from Twitter, real good guys. And Miguel was in a really talkative mood, and we started talking about boxing. And I've never actually seen Miguel so willing 
to talk about boxing himself, his career. And I told him, I said, Miguel, I got to tell you, your career should be respected. We're not going to have careers like that anymore. Look at how many good fighters he faced. And look at how many times he fought in the first five, six years after he won his belt. He was still a very active guy by today's standards. And he took on tough guys that no one else would face, like Joshua Claude, the first fight with Margarito, even Austin Trout. He became a draw. He did pay-per-view. But even when he lost, it was a part of his story. It was like a real journey, and it was memorable. These careers nowadays, it's just... Guys that you see twice a year, and that's yep. it. There's really nothing memorable about it. I mean, Steve, to, um, and, and I'll let somebody else say some after, but just I think what embodies what we're talking about is just look at the way they've handled um, Davis. You know what I mean? Just the, the he fights once in, in LB. I mean, he's, they actually brag about it, how they're not trying to, you know, he's not being promoted for the hardcore fans, and then it's just – I don't know where we're going, man. And then, like, even even Crawford now, if he was to wait and this was to come to fruition that they're going to fight February, he's going to be out of the ring for, what, a year and a half at 35 yeah. years old? Is that well, really the it. best fighting the best? Are we getting the best two alterweights anymore? No. no. Jimmy, keep this in mind. If he fights on that car, which I guess they've announced it. I got the press release today on, on Black Prime. I guess OnlyFans wasn't available, right? But anyway, <laughs> so if you fight on the next day, uh, on December 10th, you, again, remember, he needed some rounds this year because he has not fought since November 20th of 2021. So I kind of get what they're doing. He has, they still have a window of about the first half of 2023 before the WBO says that they will call for his mandatory defense. That's when that 18-month period ends. So keep that in mind. I, but again, if oh, right. does he have a fight, stuff, Steve? Does he have yeah, a fight coming up? Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, I'll send you some stuff, Jimmy. But they, they announced late last night he's going to fight on this network or this app called Black Prime, B-L-A-K Prime. He's going to fight David Avanesian in Omaha. It was stunning. That when that news came out, I said, oh, this is great. Now I know what I'm going to write about on Sunday. But, yeah, it, it, it's been the talk of Twitter. <laughs> oh, you think um, she's good. So, so he, obviously he was training a little bit. You think, keeping in mind that maybe the, the Spence fight could have become uh, like an actual thing, but it didn't. So he was yeah. probably training, right? Yeah, look, Terrence has a very disciplined lifestyle. He, This isn't a guy that puts on a lot of weight in between. I, his, his work ethic is probably among one of the best in boxing you're not going to have a lot of discipline issues with him so that that's what's going to happen there but that's a busy night guys keep that in mind this is the heisman trophy night for espn and top rank's going to put on a pretty big show i think tiafima lopez is going to fight pedraza with a lot of their young prospects being showcased and there might be another show um so and also december 3rd is going to be the third fight between chocolatito and estrada which is maybe the last great rivalry in boxing I think that's another thing of the past. We're not going to get any more rivalries, guys. No. You can't even get these guys to fight once. How many great rematches and third fights are we going to see from this point forward? Steve, I'm, I'm, I'm getting uh, depressed over here. Oh. No, I'm just saying, I'm getting depressed uh, uh, can over I here. Just, Go ahead, Jimmy. Yeah. Look, I just want to ask Steve one more question. Uh, this is my theory, kind of what happened. This is, you know, I'm just taking this back and I'm looking at it. I'm thinking Showtime had no more slots for this year. Okay. Um, even if they wanted to make the fight, Showtime, they didn't go. They didn't bring this to Fox because I believe they know they need Showtime bad. And I think Steve Espinosa said, "You bring that fight to Fox, and there's going to be no slots for you next year. I'll go strictly yeah. MMA, right?" And I think they said, "But you're going to have to wait until next year till we get the budget." And I think they've been stringing the fans along and lying and blah blah blah, knowing they couldn't make it till next year. What do you think of that? There, there's some that there's some validity to that as the fiscal budget and the calendar changes. Now, guys, I'm actually being told, and again, this is far from done, but it's being worked on. There's actually been some somewhat serious discussions. Tank Davis, Ryan Garcia. Um, I said this on another show. I was told that Gervonta has had a continuance on his criminal case. Ooh. So it's not December. It's going to be in February. So he could be. Engaged in a fight in the early part of 2023 against Ryan Garcia before he gets taken to the big house. 
But again, there's still a lot of work to be done on that particular fight. Um, you know, that's the latest on everything. I, I hope that fight happens, seeing is believing. But do I actually have any faith? <laughs> Based on the track record, no, not really. You need to get back to and church, man. It seems to me like you're losing your faith. I think that's the problem. <laughs> I mean, Jimmy, Jimmy, that sounded to me like a judicial determination with the whole Gervonta Davis thing. Yes. So might be some grounds <laughs> to that. But it, it, Steve, last question I got for you, because I, I know you probably you know, don't want You so know, you say have I lost my faith. You know, yeah. you, you say have I lost my faith. I've kind of felt this way for a while. Look, I, I, I turn down jobs in boxing now. I'm bored by it. I'm like, yeah. Because first of all, I tell people, my free time's worth more than what you're going to pay me. I'm good. Trust me, <laughs> I'm good. I've never made this much money working this few hours, and it's great. <laughs> okay? God bless the American dream. Capitalism is number one. So, nice. with that said, so with that said, I have options. I feel sorry for these other guys who have to pretend like this is great and we love the job. And off the record, they tell me, Steve, this is the worst it's ever been. <laughs> I feel bad for them because they don't have the options I do. You know right. what? I, I love the fact that I can be independent and actually say this stuff because it has to be said. There's not a lot of truth telling. Quite frankly, there's not a lot of knowledge being taken out there. But none. The, but you cannot fix the it has to be completely blown up. There has to be a reset of the market. The bubble has to burst. And there has to be people willing to work with one another. Because short of a monopoly, I do not know if a niche sport, which boxing is, can really exist with four different entities pulling in opposite directions. Well, listen, we might have to do something ourselves here then to accelerate the decline. Uh, that's, you know, they call it accelerationism. So we might have to go with that. Listen, yeah. somebody, somebody in the chat is asking me to ask you via the super chat. Yeah. Shout out to Steve Kim. He says, Cepeda versus Jojo, who you got? Okay, I, I love the shrimp. He's a, he's a, he's a guy that I like to say he, he fights like he's double park. He's a real lightweight. Jojo, to me, is more of a blown up featherweight, 130 pounder. I like the activity and size of uh, Camarón. I like Zapata in that fight. Well, there you go. Steve still follows boxing, like he said. He he still keeps I a just, keen eye on it. Yeah. Shit, guys, well, can I give all? Can I give you and all of your audience a hint for making this yes. much more palatable and keeping your sanity? Don't take any of this seriously. It's all a joke. It's just entertainment. And even for you guys who do this fine show that I listen to, still on a regular basis, you Thank coach. You. Uh, who else? Uh, uh, Box. I love these guys. You guys are great. You guys got to take an opportunity to mock this whole thing and be honest. And none of this is that serious. We're all going to live. We're not curing cancer. But just enjoy the mockery that has become of this sport, and it'll actually be enjoyable. Seriously. It go. sounds like you've been doing ayahuasca. <laughs> sounds like you've been doing ayahuasca with uh, Deontay Wilder. Is that what happened? <laughs> well, He's looking at yeah, like he, the cosmic would, joke. He, he was talking this way all the way back in, um, since the days of uh, uh, the next round, man. You were saying the future looks bleak. You were saying that back in 2015. <laughs> I, am a, I am a pragmatist. Um, you know, like, look, let me give you an example of boxing taking uh, the shortcut. I I'm looking forward to B-Ball against Zerto Ramirez. I think it's a really interesting fight. B-Ball, I think, is a skilled guy. Uh, I think the world of him, from a personal standpoint, one of the, the nicest individuals I've ever met. But that fight should be in L.A. Because if you really want to build something for either guy as an attraction uh, in America, you could have had that fight in L.A. And I know some venues wanted that fight. But they took the easy way out by going to the Middle East because that is now the new financial stimulus plan for boxing. Just go to the Middle East where no real fans are going to go. You're not going to set any roots down. Um, and, and that's it. I mean, when Dana White says boxing treats every event as a going out of sale event, he ain't wrong. I, I mean, for years, boxing has relied on going to casinos, pricing out the real fans, and then they wonder why you can't develop a younger fan base. That's why they've never actually truly invested into the sport in so many ways. And the chickens have come home to roost. So now it's like, that's what's funny when I hear all this anger or I, or I feel the anger of a lot of boxing fans over certain things not happening. I think it's great because it gives me content. I can just be a smart ass and write about it and laugh. <laughs> it doesn't affect my paycheck because I still well, feel as though I can, because I still feel as though I can give an insight that no one else can. Exactly. You know, so it's, it's good by me. 
Yeah, because you've been you've been on it since back when it was good. So you see the decay right in front of you. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, oh, sorry, uh, BDA, I cut you off. No, no, it's okay. Go ahead, man. Oh, um, all right, Steve. So now I I wanted to say that uh, ask you about this. Um, because a lot of people you see it on Twitter, right? Um, yeah, in your way gets no love, right? Especially that you know. Yeah. You know who, yeah. Just, yeah, just give him no love at all. Who's he ever fought? Who's he ever beat? Well, the kid who tossed Anton Russell an absolute beating the other night, he obliterated him in two rounds. Yes, he did. So, so yeah, people, and, and, uh, and, I'm waiting for that to be brought up again. <laughs> right. And you know what's interesting is that uh, I have spoken to top rank and I said, guys, you guys have one of the best fighters in the world, except. I never get to see him except, and, and like Dave said, they're going to try to get him out three times in 2023. Should he come out clean? Two of the fights will be in Japan because is is Amazon Prime deal out there is highly lucrative. But again, that's the problem. If you brought um, if you brought Inoue more out there to the public, and let's say he had one year at this stature, could fight three, four times a year, he could really become something. But unfortunately. I think um, he will only be a once or twice a year fighter for the rest of his career, and mm-hmm. there is no chance for him to develop the way a Pacquiao did as a foreign fighter. And that's where, look, people in the business don't even disagree with me. They, they know what the situation is. Um, I don't know where this business is going to be in five years. Look, I'm not saying there's a demise of boxing. It's not. It's always going to last. But when people have delusions of grandeur about who's the next Canelo, I just tell them there is none. Who else is going to put in 65, 70 fights the way he did? They're, they're, seriously, the, it, look, keep, keep track of this, guys. From the fighters that started right around, let's say, 2016. So that's like the Shakur Stevenson Olympic class, right? And he's mm-hmm. an excellent boxer. From that class, that group of fighters, how many of them will have even have careers that will go 40 fights? Mm. He won't. I'm just telling you, Holy because smokes. what's happening is they, they win their titles early, around like 16, 17, 18 fights. Then they start to make some real money. They never want to go backwards. They don't want to make any concessions. And then they become twice a year fighters at age 23. So think about the, uh, Shakur Stevenson's career at this current pace. Unless something changes, he's going to have no more than 39 fights. Now, keep this in perspective. It took Mayweather the 39 fights to get to De La Hoya. Think mm-hmm. about that. He was 39 and 0, four weight division champion, um, one of the best fighters in the world. He had, I mean, so the work is not being put in. And I think these fighters, when they say, well, I'm never going backwards on the money, I'm never going to take a tune up fight or a non title fight to help my exposure, I don't ever want to hear them, well, I'm not a big star. I'm just going to say, yeah, because you put no work into it. I mean, someone has to tell them the truth. Might as well be me. Hey man, well listen, yeah, it's, it's it's always good to have you speaking the truth, man, because it is it's absolutely, true. Listen- guys. I, I've I've hijacked your show. I want to continue <laughs> to listen. Uh, <laughs> no, you- <laughs> log me, uh, log me off. Uh, yeah, I'm but- ask him real quick, Steve. Yeah, yeah, Steve, you're not hijacking, bro. You can hang as long as you want. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm looking forward to Jose Cepeda, El Chon Cepeda versus Regis uh, El Rugaru for Grace. Crossroads fights between uh, the best fighting the best. Yeah, um, Progress kind of stalled his career. Cepeda's good. My question, my, my real question is, I have a hard time pinpointing what Cepeda lacks. I kind of know what he does good. What's the deal with him? And who are you picking? Well, Cepeda is a very up and down fighter. A very soft spoken individual. He, he, oh, he fights up or down to his, his level of opposition. I get the sense he will be motivated for this one. I get this. That's a tough fight because Zapata can really punch down the middle, guys. I, he has real power. And but I get my feeling is that Progre may be a little bit too slick, maybe a little bit too active for him. But I think it's close to being a fifty-fifty fight. I think I'm shading Ruguru, but I wouldn't bet my life on it. That's one of the few fights left on the two thousand two calendar that I'd actually really be looking forward to. So. Anyway, guys, I got to get going here. Can you log me off and I'll continue to listen? Man. I really appreciate you guys giving me you, some time you, here. You mean you're not, you're not, you're not head over heels about uh, Fury should um, just saw a three? Guys, can I just say something about Tyson Fury? 
I don't want to hear any top ten talk all the time. He's had one of the worst runs of a heavyweight <laughs> champion. And he look, here's the thing. You know when Tyson Fury is lying? It's that old line. When his lips move. Lips did move really oh. think, yeah, did anyone <laughs> really think he was fighting Anthony Josh? Well, look, he, he's a character, <laughs> but I wouldn't trust him as far as I could throw him. I mean, exactly. listen, he's presented on Greta in the YouTube community right now. People loathe the guy. Yeah, look, he, he's earned every bit of that derision. <laughs> uh, but anyway, guys, I got to get going. I'll continue to listen, okay? Appreciate All you right. guys. Steve, God thank bless. you for Steve, hey, by, Keep up the good work, brother, on Fearless, thank, too. Thank you, brother. Yeah, uh, thanks, guys. Thank you, man. Thank you for dropping by. Yeah, there you go. I hope you didn't think that I was pushing him out because I, I, I was doing it for his benefit because I didn't want to keep him on too long. He said uh, he, he, he could be here for about half an hour and uh, looking at the clock now, it's 45. So I wasn't rushing him off, man. Obviously Ooh. not. No, I mean, if this guy could stay on for about two hours, <laughs> if I, I'd let him fucking host the show, right. he'd do a better job than, than we do. But uh, shout out to the Steve Kim, man. I mean, I actually, it's just a, yeah, it's a vault of knowledge, right? I mean, I mean, he has an inside track and all this shit, all the speculation we do. He can either verify it or say nay. You know what I mean? Even if you no, can, and, I mean, and I actually kind of like this version of Steve. I kind of like this version. Like when he was doing this full time, especially when he was at ESPN. I mean, he could only hold, especially that emasculated network. I'm so glad that he left that. He has too much integrity for that network. But uh, anyways, it's just it, it's refreshing because now there's no filter. Now he's going to tell you like it is. You know what I mean? This guy's fucking acting like an asshole this is a joke because he's he's seen it he's seen it when this he's seen the sport at its height at its height you know what i mean like uh he came right after that when muhammad ali fought in front of 70 million people worldwide on television and let that sink in 70 million people at the time that was the third of the world's population that was where the sport was at and Fucking Wilder just did 77,000 views. And that's the high end. I'm still fucking oh. harping on the fact that he said months ago that this Crawford Spence fight, he did the math and he, he had a hard time believing that seeing it happen. And, you know, this, that's, why I, that's why I asked him the question of what was going through your mind when you were on Twitter seeing all these people saying, oh, it's going to happen in October. It's going to happen in November. It's going to happen in December. Because that was, that was was going in, in, to the back of my mind. I kept remembering what he said about that. And I'm looking at it and, you know, 20% of my brain is going, oh, I hope it happens. I hope he's wrong. Unfortunately, he wasn't. Uh, like he said, at least there's still hope. Well, at least there's still hope for the fight to happen next year. But, I mean, uh, you know, Crawford's going to be, what, a couple of years away from Social well, Security? Well, we said it, man. And you even agreed back in, I think it was August, we said, listen, it was, no, it was the beginning of September. I said, if this fight isn't called, like an official date made by the end of this month, there's not a chance it can happen. It just can't because mm. of the dates, holidays. And now we're about to go into a winter where, man, it's talking about even where I live, like shortages of gas and shit. So like prices, everything's getting crazy, like doubling at the supermarket. So people aren't going to have that kind of funny money just to burn on a pay-per-view. So... All that, yeah, no, it's things aren't good right now, brother man. I just want you to take what we get and keep on working on that second renaissance. You do an awesome job there. Thank you, man. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I mean, listen, these the, you said that the, the winter's coming. There's a lot of people on Twitter. I've heard some people say, well, why not? Why don't they deserve the big bucks? Speaking of Crawford and Spence, they're, they're the best fighters in the world. And how many times do we got to say it, man? This, this isn't baseball, this isn't basketball, this isn't the NFL where if you get the high stats, you're probably going to get the big box because of your performance here in boxing. You could have the best record undefeated. You could be punched the least and be punching people the most at the connect rate. That's not going to get you the big box. Something about boxing. I don't know what it is. I don't know what makes a superstar. I can sit here and, and, and theorize, but the main thing is just because you're good doesn't mean you deserve the big box. And guys like Crawford and Spence, especially Crawford, I don't know. They, they seem to believe that they deserve a hundred mil. Because they're the best and undefeated and all that. That's not how it works, man. They need to get that out of there. You know what, Jimmy, right. Gonzalo, and Chief, which is... Maybe we need a Saddam Hussein. Remember back in the Middle East, that's what everybody says about the Middle Easterners. They want a guy that <laughs> clamps down on them. No, I'm serious. They complain about, oh, dictatorship, yeah. blah, blah, blah. But in the end, they love it. They want a dictator. Maybe that's what we need. We need Dana White to come here and set these guys straight. I don't want to think. Yeah. Iraq was pushing it better with him than, than nowadays. Well, you were in Back in the day... In yeah. What's that? Oh, no, I'm oh, saying Gonzalo sorry, was there. He was, no, I'm saying Gonzalo was there. He, he, you know, he was in the front lines. He was in the shit. 
Oh yeah, I, he sent me some pictures, man. I got some cool pictures saved from. Um, yeah, th- th- I no, just want to say Jimmy, back Jimmy, in the Jimmy, day can too, I just, right? Sorry to interrupt you. What? Sorry to interrupt. You forgot to say. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot to say, J- Steve Kim. So you can check him out on uh, snack.com on Canine Skim Corner. That's where he has his uh, columns. Check him out. He drops about three a week, I think, or about two a week. And you can also check him out on Twitter, obviously, uh, at Steve Kim 323 I forgot to ask him. Somebody told asked ask me to ask him but about the three-knockdown rule. When's that coming back? Because they've been in my ear for a while now. Hopefully, it's still on, man. Or if it's not, maybe I, they're moving somewhere else. Well, I believe it's... Yeah, I think because Thriller was picking it up. or And, and sometimes... Um, Mario does, you know, he does different um, things. Like he'll do a movie or something like that. So sometimes he has to, he's away on set. So like it does periodically this happens. So mm-hmm. I actually don't know what's the hiatus, but I'm sure they'll definitely get back together. But you can, I mean, he's on fearless. Some episodes, 30, 35 yep. minutes. You know what I mean? That's if you really want to see him at his best too. <laughs> he kills yeah, it. He and Jason Whitlock do a good show together. Great job. Yeah, brother. So sorry to interrupt you, Jimmy. I just wanted to drop yeah. that uh, that info there for the people. Yeah, he's really smart, right? <laughs> yeah, it was 100% him, and Steve, him and uh, Dougie Fisher, man. I bet when the boxers see him like in the elevator, they're, they're probably thinking, oh, man, he probably knows everything about me. He's like a walking library. <laughs> Steve came, man. <laughs> but Ellis and Jimmy, sorry I interrupted you. And you know, and, and, when, and when they talk, man, it's like you're reading the Ring magazine. It's like really cool. Like it brings you back. Yeah, man. Yes, as you buying those ring magazines, I stopped buying them in 2011. I should. They don't sell them anymore. Like, I mean, you gotta get them online. And anyway, it's a big thing. But Jimmy, I interrupted you, man. You were gonna say something. Maybe I hope you didn't oh, forget. I, that. Um, oh yeah, but just back, about, about back in the day, like, um, see, those guys knew they had a fight. Just to, well, the sport became the biggest sport in the world. It wasn't by accident. It happened because these guys just fought and they fought. And he always wanted to fight the best in the legacy because there was no social media. The only way you got seen was being exciting fights. And yeah, no, I, uh, the clinching, that's not doing Haney any favors. You know, it's not going to make him, you know, eventually go to pay per view, you know, his numbers, things like that. So it's like, and nobody's telling him. And now the shit where like you already got his fans. I went literally on Twitter for two minutes. What? So I didn't know about this um, Crawford fight. Because I get on, I went right to uh, that dude Hamanite's page, and he's going at some dude who's got a YouTube page saying, fucking, I would tell um, <laughs> Lomachenko to kick rocks or play 52 pickup because he ducked, wouldn't give Haney the time of day when he was franchise. And it's like, dude, he was franchised for like three months. It's just like, and he's like, he's got a YouTube page, and, this guy, and he's got like 25 retweets, fucking 83 likes. I'm like, it's just a lie and like that's what this has come down to so not only is you justifying him now like see what it is that's what it is i tell him to kick rock so they're already got doing that laying that down so when oh i'm going to 140 oh yeah fuck him he ducked you anyways and it's just like it, it just makes me dude hate the sport i'm like huh. but then again right these are the same motherfuckers who should have where were they for the you know um all these people on Twitter, the same dudes. I mean, if half of them bought fucking Wilder's pay per view, he would have done a lot more than fifty to seventy seven thousand. You know what I mean? So they're not buying that fucking thing. They're not supporting their fighters, but they'll go on Twitter and fucking just get in these seven thread fucking arguments and they're just lying through their fucking teeth. It's just insane, man. It truly is. It's so, nothing new though. I, it's nothing I, it's nothing new though. Go ahead, kids. I'll, I'll go after you. Uh, yeah, I was just going to say, but don't get too mad about it. You know why? Because they know that they're lying and they, they know that they're not spreading like the, the real, like the truth, the actual gospel or, about boxing. They're just, you know, if, if they say a lie and it sticks, let's fucking run with it and let's keep spreading it. And, and like BDS said, the more you talk about it and it's perceived as the truth, it's okay to them. So it's like in the end of the day, they don't really give a fuck. People, so most people don't. Right. But this goes all the way back to when, like, the internet, I won't say first started, but when it really started to its pick up with America Online and dial up and everything. Steve Kim's alluded to this before um, on the show. And this is where I think he and I crossed paths before he became a famous writer. And when I was still just like, you know, a high school slash college student uh, getting online, that you cross people that would think they would. Because they have a keyboard and they can put their voice out there, they think they're important. They think that they, what they say is true, and you can't prove them wrong. 
So we have these delusional people that uh, are supporting Haney, tell him that he's the best. He's believing it. He puts it out there on social media. And, and when it comes down to it, to be honest with you, uh, people think uh, when they think superstardom and part of my ADD of going all over the place, but they, they like to mention Pernod Whitaker. Pernod Whitaker could not sell. Pernod Whitaker was lucky that HBO gave him a contract uh, for a long-term contract prior to the Chavez fight. Other than that, he couldn't say he had two pay-per-views his entire career. That was Chavez and De La Hoya. Hmm. That's it. Trinidad, Trinidad was even a regular HBO fight. That's he right, never fought Corte. Yeah. Um, to become undisputed at lightweight, he still couldn't sell pay-per-view. Camacho was getting pay-per-views uh, fighting Boom Boom Mancini, a, a shot Boom Boom Mancini for a WBO belt, which was very lightly regarded back in the late 80s or early 90s, but he was selling pay-per-view and getting million-dollar pay uh, paychecks or more. Mm. Whitaker could not sell. He was not a star. We revere him now, but no one was really raving. Man, did you see that Pernod Whitaker fight? Nobody was. We, we revere him now, but we didn't then. If Haney wants yeah, to go down that absolutely. track... Absolutely. By the way, Haney you're 100% was, right. I mean, I, I, I'm not trying to uh, d d like stop, stop on the man's grave, but nobody was raving about Pernod Whitaker. They were, no, the, I hear more about him were, now. The writers were, and the, uh, the commentators were, because that's, he was the house fighter. But nobody was sitting there going, hey, guys, let's get together. Pernod Whitaker's fighting tonight. Even the Roy Jones. That happened in, the, Even Roy the Jones, Mr. That Superman. In, didn't exist. Even Roy Jones, Chief, well, Mr. He, Superman, wasn't selling. But HBO can give him right. that extension to the contract. I mean, we're, those days are long gone. When they could buy... You remember, you know, Steve mentioned HBO. He mentioned The Wire and The Sopranos. Interesting thing, The Sopranos was the ratings king for HBO. The Wire was sort of their pet project. That was the, 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 the show that academics loved. Because right. they used to talk about sociology and epidemiology and blah, blah, blah. They loved it. But it was never a ratings grabber. In fact, the last season, which I believe was number five, uh, Sam, uh, Simon, I forget the, what the guy's name was, the creator, he said, look, they rushed us to finish it because they just didn't want to spend money on it anymore. So it, 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 those days are long gone. When when HBO used, or a network used to have a pet fighter like Roy Jones or Whitaker, just to, just to have the prestige of saying we have the number one pound for pound fighter in the world. Those days are, are sort of gone. I mean, Stomp Rank is still doing it with Shakur Stevenson. I still don't know why they keep pushing this guy. I mean, yeah, he's talented, but he's not selling. He's boring. Maybe they do think eventually he's going to become some sort of a Mayweather, maybe a, a pale imitation of, of Mayweather, which would still be pretty good in terms of pay-per-view numbers. But I don't know. I don't know. But I, I do want to say something here real quick, man, because I forgot here. John Gonzalez's super chat. He says, American boxing needs a knee to its neck. And be knelt on until it's done. Get the boxing fix from the other parts of the world. Absolutely, John Gonzalez. I've been saying it. Keep your keep your neck knee on their necks. That's what I've been saying. We need to keep pressuring people, and we need to call off kind of call out the bullshit. Like I said, we start off with the clinches. Because look, I don't want this to become the show where we just complain, complain, complain. I, I I'll never complain unless I have a resolution, and that's what I we bring to the table. So with the clinches. The trainers need to step up too and start telling this, the, the referees before the fight, look, if this guy clinches, I'm going to let you know. I'll scream, I'll screech, I'll cry rape, whatever I got to do. And us fans, we got to start calling them out. I was surprised, fellas. I've said it before. I was surprised when ESPN put a clinch count, a clinch counter on the screen during the Haney Cambosos fight. And guess what happened? I went on the, the you know, the LBC channels. Oh, that's right. That that just shows you they don't they don't want Devin Haney to shine. They're, they're racist. They're racist. They're so racist. Why are they trying to <sighs> shove Shakur Stevenson down our throats? Makes no sense. But then again, sense and logic over there, I, I don't think it really exists. So we got to keep calling it out. Man. And keep calling out the clinches. You know, when it goes to the clinches, um, people try to say that's part of boxing. Wrapping a guy's head underneath your arm like you're about to give him the DDT, just like. Um, <laughs> Jake the Snake Rodriguez is not boxing. <laughs> that is not boxing. It never has been boxing. That is a foul and always has been. It always will be. Mm -hmm. um, clinching the show is except... Go ahead. Sorry. I was just no, saying, clinching would be acceptable at the end of a barrage. You know what I mean? Like, if you uh, like, you would reach out and clinch. You, you were labeled to get away that, like, if you've been really hurt. That's the only time right. the refs, I remember, they would ever let you get away with it. Like, that was a tactic, okay, because you're allowed to clinch now and then. But you get a warning, but if it was excessive, but obviously you can do it, especially when you're hurt. That's like a, they, they tell you to do that. So the rough foods look away with that. But when it becomes a tactic, like every time Cambosos is close and what happened in that made it even worse. Cambosos wanted to like, you know, 
look, ref, see what he's doing? Like, he thought he was going to, like, get the ref to call the fight for him. It was just so, like, he was trying to put himself in a position. Like, he instantly put his hands down when he, he was lost and didn't know what else to do. But, yeah, no, the fact that he's, I, from what I saw in that fight, I believe in more huh, that Lomachenko would angle him and take him to pieces because he can't handle anything. He has a certain, if you just draw a circle around Haney, like, like a three-foot, with a three-foot circle out, Anything on that inside of that circle, you can have your way with him. He needs you out at the end of his punches where he can pause shot and have long, you know, that's his accuracy is at. He doesn't do well inside. You see it. That's the reason why he just grabs. He, he kind of goes to water. He's just not, so it's not his that leads, forte. That leads to two other topics. Um, uh, and I'll, uh, one will be very brief. One that shows you exactly what kind of a trainer Bill Haney is not. Uh -oh. his, fight, his boy can't fight inside. When I say his boy, I mean his son. His son can't fight inside, and he was a trainer his whole career. So, Bill, you didn't teach your son how to fight inside. You did not have any inside game, any idea, or any IQ to pass on to your son about how to fight inside. All he developed on his own instincts, or you taught him one of the two, is to clinch. And not to clinch by just wrapping arms up, grabbing behind the head, tying arms up, putting your chin in the back of their neck. None of this is legal. Now, I'm not correct. trying to whine and say Cambosis would have won if this would have happened differently. No, Cambosis is a lesser fighter. This is obvious. But when your inside game is to clinch, which is like what Ward's was, which is what Floyd's was at times, Mosley even got to be a, gra uh, a big grabber later in his career. And you, know, guys, you guys know I love Shane Mosley, but his older career, he started holding a whole lot more. It shows the fact that you don't have the instincts to fight inside. And, uh, and if you do have the instincts, you're selling out in order to try and protect yourself. It usually means you need to start looking for another player. Now, as far as... Um, this, let me wrap this part up real yeah, quick. Yeah, no problem, brother. This, uh, Haney's biggest asset is his jab. Okay, when you're fighting a lefty, that's not going to be the punch that's going to land the most often. So you're going to have to sell out. He's, uh, and he, I won't say he'll have to sell out, but um, it's not going to be a punch that's going to land at will. And so his, everything revolves off of him getting his jab set up to set up the right hand. He doesn't hook much, and exactly. we know he can't fight inside. So now that his jab's going to be mostly nullified by playing patty cake, and then the foot battle's going to have to go into play, which I don't think he's going to be very good at, and Loma's much better at. Unless Loma's noticeably slipped a couple steps, Haney's either going to be for a very rough fight that he could lose, and they may give him uh, a gift decision to try and set up a Shakur fight, uh, or he's going to lose this fight because he's going to have no clue what to do except for to uh, hold all night. The last thing is, I, I did say this to uh, Jimmy, you and, and BDA offline, uh, off air the other day, is it could end up being like Orlando Canizales versus Junior Jones. After Loma gets off to a fast start and then Haney starts clinching, once he starts clinching, if he starts walking Loma back all day long, and if he's able to hold and walk him, then he can probably walk his way to a victory because it'll be very little action. He'll probably slap on the inside looking busier, and it'll be a very ugly fight that he'll probably get the nod in if he wins that way. It's true that Chief did say that off the air, but he also cursed a lot more than he did here. Uh, shout out to John Gonzalez <laughs> yeah, for his contribution. <laughs> shout out to John Gonzalez for his contribution with the Super Chat. He says, it's not lying if you believe it to be true. That's right. That's every lawyer, every good lawyer worth their salt knows. I think Dale Brooks Jr. <laughs> is trying to pull that off right now as we speak. And shout did out to- Did you see him to, crying? <laughs> yeah, so, but hold, on, hold on. Shout out to Jack the Kodo Nuff for his contribution with the Super Chat. I like his picture, by the way. And he says- where would Loma go pound for pound if he beats Devin in? I wouldn't put him in number one. Tell you that much. I don't think beating Devin Haney uh, is that would that would be that impressive for him. Maybe depending if he beats him and knocks him out within five rounds or something really, really, really outrageous. But uh, I don't think I'd put him above uh, Inoue. But Jimmy, go ahead, man. You were going to say yeah. something. Well, yeah, it was just um, to kind of piggyback off what you were saying. Yeah, he he always that he could get away with not fighting on the inside first off there's not much fighting in the inside in the images anyways but his jab is all he needed you know what i mean it was good enough and he's always been on the bigger side so he's been able to get away with it but he has to fight at length at a wide stance snap his punch out you get on the inside and dodge all right for instance guys just think about this remember how haney looked against jojo diaz to what he looked against cambosa right like from i didn't think he looked that spectacular against diaz to um, a world beater in that first Kimbosa fight. See the difference when you fight a southpaw? 
Mm-hmm. Yep, he's up against say. the southpaw. Exactly, the dude. Southpaw. That's why I'm bringing up because you reminded me when you 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 said that. Well, Lomachenko's a southpaw, so right away his jab isn't going to be as effective. And then Lomachenko knows angles. And if Diaz could use him, spun him a couple of times, made him look uncomfortable on the inside. What the fuck do you think Loma's going to do? And his people know that. And yeah. I don't give a fuck. When everybody says, I believe they're trying, they're going to go to 140, they're not going to make that fight, and they won't even talk about it until they age him out. What's up, Gonzalo? If you just look at this last fight with Cambosos, the guy only threw 411 punches. That's Cambosos. So that's not real active for him. For the for a fighter in the in the 135 pound division, yeah, Lomachenko is obviously gonna throw, I believe, more punches than, than 411. And the work on the inside, man, with that lead, with that left hook, I mean, um, yeah, he's de- definitely gonna be tar- targeting targeting and angling uh, to land to the body. So yeah, it's one of those things we have to see. Uh, I think I would favor Lomachenko on this. One. But but Gonzalo, yeah. like you said, and and Loma is faster. Than Haney, it's substantially harder than Jojo Diaz. I mean, it's, yeah, sorry, I, I meant Loma is faster than than Jojo Diaz. He's hits harder. I mean, that that left hand that he hit uh, Comey with, real short on the clinch. I mean, that's that's he generated some massive power from that. That I was impressed by that one. And, uh, and he's accurate as fuck too. So that's right. Well, I don't, you know, you didn't have that, to say the f word yeah. there, but uh, shout out to Kishiro yeah, right, for kind of did. Shout out to Kenshiro for his contribution to the Super to, Chat. Uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Real quick, real quick. Shout out to Kenshiro for his contribution to the Super Chat. He says, if Haney clinches Josh Taylor, then Taylor will kick his ass. That's a good point. Uh, Josh Taylor is dirty on the inside, but uh, he clinches too a lot. Uh, I didn't like that, that the amount of clinching he did later in the fight against Ramirez, but shout out to Kenshiro for his contribution. Shout out to Amok PVP for his contribution as well with the Super Chan. He says, Devin, the Vice Grip Haney, hashtag Muay Thai style. (laughs) Yeah, he's got that Muay Thai clinch. I wouldn't be surprised to see a couple of knees coming in his next fight. Maybe he'll impress us with that. A couple of elbows while he's at it. Go ahead, Chief. What were you going to say? Lost my train of thought. It wasn't that important. What's the matter with you? No, but you know what? I'll go on. getting old. (laughs) Well, now you're, 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 you're still young, man. Come on now. I was going to say about, look, I don't want this to turn, like I said, to turn into the show where we complain, complain, complain. But the reason why I had to bring up the American, yeah, why not? Let's go with it. The reason why I brought up the complaining thing about well, or the, the American thing, we got a couple of issues here. Like we said at the beginning of the show, if you haven't heard already, Crawford Spence is not happening this year. Uh, Crawford's going to be taken on Avenesian on BLK Prime, which is a streaming platform. I think their motto is the more color, the better. And uh, that's what it's going to be cost up around 30, 35 bucks. Spence, meanwhile, is complaining about how, eh, you know, I might move up. I might move up to 154 now, y'all. You know, but I can't. I, but he's not going to fight Jamal Charlo because that's his dog. Meanwhile, we've got Deontay Wilder crying after a fight. It wouldn't surprise me if after the fight, he ended up going uh, to, 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 I don't know, fucking get some ice cream. Maybe uh, get a couple of tubs. You know, like a woman menstruating. Because that's how he was acting after the fight. He just kept crying. Him and uh, Malik Scott was crying along with him. It looked like they had just finished reading Little Women. I don't understand what was wrong with them. And there was a guy (laughs) hugging them from behind. Just going back and forth, hugging them from behind. It was bizarre. It was disgusting. And people were perplexed and terrorized by what they were seeing. Then, we've got Devin Haney. And I want to play you a clip of that going after Pauli Malinaji. Now, Paul is an outspoken guy. He speaks his mind and he's not always right. Mm-hmm. But but he is he knows how to argue. He knows how to construct arguments. And sometimes it's even if you don't agree with him, you go, shit, you know what? I think he's right. <laughs> he he it makes what he's based, saying. It's, it's based off sound evidence, right? right? Never mind the fact he's a professional boxer, but it's what he does say, whether you agree with it or not, like you said, if it's made in good faith with sound points you can eat he's making a point but go ahead bda well yeah so i want to play you a clip of because remember in the l- previous episode uh we talked about uh, how devin haney went after him because malinaji said that he believes haney is going to avoid lomachenko so haney had some choice words for paul he called him polina i believe so paul had to reply and i want to play you, you a, a clip which i haven't heard all of it but we'll watch most of it here and we'll comment in between before we do that, so feminine. 
before we do that, shout out to Rapax Rocking Company for his contribution to the Super Chat. He says, I have family over, been breaking away here and there to listen in, but I will have to catch the show tonight. I prefer live, but I can't. I mean, there's no such thing as can't. It's your choice, man. Just leave the family aside. And if you're driving them, maybe, you know, pull over, kick them out, tell them to go get a cup of coffee or something. You'll pick them up. You know, I, I, I left some... Well, actually, I shouldn't say that. But uh, shout out to Rapax Rocking Company for his contribution to the Super Chat. Shout out to Michael Poe for his contribution to the Super Chat as well. He says, I was kidding. I just wanted to say hello. What's up, everybody? Enjoy. Well, thank you, Michael. Thank you. Always appreciate your support. Thank you for listening, guys. And thank you for the... Uh, the super chats really appreciate you know why guys hit the like too man i we appreciate the super chats but uh the like it goes a long way man and it doesn't cost you anything so hit the like hit the like hit the like, yeah. subscribe if you haven't subscribed already uh but yeah but listen the, the, I, so i outlined three big problems there with american boxing uh unfortunately a lot of black fighters aren't fighting each other and there's a long trail of this going on i mean remember when jamal jermel and J uh, jared heard were all in this uh, around the same division and Jared heard, they, they would all pass at Austin Trout around. First it was Jermall, I believe, then Jermell, then Austin Trout. I mean, then Jared heard, and it's, why, why are these guys beating up a poor Austin Trout and they're not fighting each other? And guess what? That fight never happened. Crawford Spence, probably yeah. not going to happen. Tank Davies versus Haney, not happening. Tank Davies versus Shakur, not fighting. Shakur versus, it's th these American fight. Meanwhile, people give Canelo shit for saying, I'm not going to fight any Mexicans. But there's no Mexicans where he's at. David Benavides remains to be seen if he is Mexican, and he, he can't even get a plant, a, a fight done with Caleb Plant, who's on his side of the street, same company. So, I mean, listen, you can give Canelo shit for saying something, but these other guys, forget about what they're saying. They're not doing it. They're not fighting each other. So there's a that's the fourth no problem with American boxing. That's right. And the, the, another problem with American boxing, like I said earlier, the clinching. Oh, it's the sweet science. It's a sweet. Well, you know, you don't, if you don't like it, you don't have to watch it. Believe me, I want, I don't watch these fights live anymore. And here's what again, Marcus of Queensbury rules. There's no. It, uh, I don't know how anybody can misinterpret this. No wrestling, no hugging allowed. No wrestling, no hugging allowed. Because when we did that uh, Devin Haney video, and we did the clinch stat numbers, some people were saying, "Well, no, 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 he's not. Uh, it's not illegal if you if you clinch and punch." That's not what it says here. All it says is no wrestling or hugging allowed. <laughs> There's no distinction made. Oh my god! About that. Somebody oh. said that. Actually, uh, yeah, holding and hitting is also a foul. Exactly. Um, <laughs> That's I mean, why I sounded a laughing cheap. It is. It's another foul. Whoever He's actually said that there's no rule against it uh, is, is either never seen the rules enforced or is very new to the sport of boxing. It's on the Marcus of Queensbury rules. Also, there's no holding and hitting. Now, referees started allowing holding and hitting to try and let fighters work their way out of a clinch, and then. But that, that just encourages holding and hitting. So, that, I mean, the best way to do is for refs, uh, for people to really uh, get a hold on clinching. But Mr. BDA was about to uh, play us a clip, and I'm looking forward to it. Well, there's Remember a lot when going Mills on. Lane would, if you punched another box in the back, like today, now guys like sitting there and taking pot shots in the back of each other's heads. They never allowed that shit. They would jump right in there and warn them both right away. Knock that shit off. T they would take control of the fight. You mean like what happened? Doing a thrombosis? Yeah, the, uh, totally punch him in the back of the stem of the brain. Like, you don't have to hit somebody hard there to rattle him a little. Like, and that's the reason why, yeah, that's the reason why the refs would jump right in right away. Fucking pull him apart. I'm telling you both right now. Don't, you know what I mean? Mills Lane was great with that. He, he was small, too, and he'd pull those guys apart and fucking scream yep. at him. But you have to take, yeah, you have to lay the ground rules down. You fucking clinch again, I'm going to take a point. Yep. <laughs> and if you, if you keep taking points again, I'm going to disqualify you. Yep, but then, that not, then that ref's not going to get picked for uh, uh, an event again. In this case, they're out of exactly. a job. Exactly. They're all worried about getting their next gig. They don't want to. They don't want to make it about themselves. That's what they'd say. You know what I mean? I don't want to rock the boat. No, you just. You know what I mean? It's like that's the reason why. Uh, listen, there's a reason. Like Mills Lane was an actual um, circuit judge. Yep, I believe Jack Reese is too. But there's a reason they would use police officers and judges, not because they were more honorable. Well, judges, you'd hope they would be, but because they didn't want people whose um, livelihood depended on refereeing. Right. Because then it's you're too, because you, then you're going to be playing allegiances or you're more apt to fucking get bribed. But if you got like, they would try to always get somebody who's like, this is what they're doing for the love of the sport and they don't need the money. The money's secondary. No, so maybe that should be a referee. Yeah, this then. problem. 
Might as well, brother, man. <laughs> well, the f- sport's still even higher in them. Anyway, all right, I mean, so, they're dropping um, from the Olympics, too. Okay, go, Mr. BDA. Yeah, you're about to drop that fucking video. Not yet, fellas. I mean, not the video. Yet, I, uh, yeah, not yet. I, uh, shout out to Michael Paul for his contribution to the Super Chat. He says, tell Recognize that this is for him, the Matron. I'm paying you off. Can you tell me last time he owed you? <laughs> I don't know what that exactly that means. He, I means. I think he's saying uh, to tell Recognize a big up and a hello. So if that's what you want, Michael, well, that's what we'll do. Thank you so much for your contribution, man. Really appreciate it. Thanks, shout out to jo- That's right. And shout out to Joker for extending his membership program to the BD organization. Shout out to Joker. Really appreciate it. He's got a red motorcycle there of some sort. Hopefully he wears a helmet. Remember, guys, it's all about safety here at BDA Boxing. No cursing and, and ultimate safety when you're out there on your vehicle. Now, listen. I want to play this Polly Malinagic clip. But I want to harp on a little bit a little bit more of this. I'm, I'm, I liked how Steve Kim brought up Jack Reese and I was pleasantly surprised that he actually got a, uh, told him the truth about him about, hey, listen, the clinching because Jack Reese is a guy you no know, has been keeping an eye on him because Jack Reese seems to be an excellent referee. Don't get me wrong. Definitely has the experience. I believe he said he used to work uh, some sort of a medic or paramedic or something in the military or the reserve. So he's got experience. But he, Sometimes he strikes me as the type of guy that wants to take control in a bombastic way, try to get eyes on him. I hope I'm wrong, man. I hope I'm wrong. But I know Butcher was the one that was saying that, you know, fucking Jack Reese still this day. He's still talking about that uh, call he made on Fury Wilder 1 and how he kept the fight going. He probably, you guys think he goes to a bar, you know, like the guy that won state for Texas or something back in the day and every, now he's 44 he works at the bank and he still every time he goes to the bar on Friday night he still talks about that play he made to win the still, state championship he still wears his letter and he still wears his high school letter jacket for Christ's <laughs> oh, no. sakes he's no, no. bald with his gut <laughs> hanging out oh yeah listen Jack Reese dude this isn't a, uh, an opinion he's absolutely a narcissist whether it's in a way of just like one size on him but he, he likes the notoriety and the fame he's mm-hmm. gone to Showtime or uh, PBC on Fox and done commercials for them remember he was with Mark Ortega that weirdo and he, he counts him out like Mark Ortega gets bumped into by a girl in the hallway who I think is yeah. a professional wrestler maybe I I don't know and then he comes out of nowhere and he goes he counts him out on the floor so he, he's doing little like fucking snl skits on fox you know referees who don't want attention who don't want to be like you know no get away from me i don't have a twitter account i want to you know what i mean that's not me like so he's always on shows and talking yes he's kind of a jovial guy who wants to talk but yeah of course he likes that and you can see it you can see You're it saying- because there's a lot of theatrics in the things he does Jimmy, in you're saying ring. that referees should be, be, you're saying that they should be like soldiers or veterans, that they should be quite professionals. Yeah, and the, you know when a referee's done a good job if you don't notice them. But if the fighters make you have to notice them, he just does a quick, fast, bang. I'm going to warn you guys, the next time, grab his wrist, go to your neutral corner. Boom, hand him with a point to each judge. Turn to him, do it again, and I'll take another. Do it again, you're disqualified. Fight mm. It changes the fight because then people are like, that's, it's that's the same. It's just, yeah, exactly, brother, man. It's the same thing in the fucking, like in the NBA, right? Guys out there tossing elbows, pop, pop, pop. And he knows he's on his like fifth foul. He's got one more and he's bounced from the game. Suddenly the elbows come down. It's the same thing. Like they know now they're conscious of it. Fuck. And especially if they know you're not fucking around. It's also cleans the other dude up because he's going to be like, Okay, now, because every fighter knows when you see your opponent get point taken away, now the ref's going to be looking to take one from you. Remember that. That's, that's time and memorial. You caught it if you have a good corner. We'll tell you that. Now he's going to look to take one because no ref wants to affect it. So if they can even the fucking scorecard by taking one from you, they will. So they don't look favorites. Mm-hmm. So anytime a fight's, you know, points taken away, expect one. So it cleans him up too is what basically I'm saying. You know what the... Uh- the KSI fight versus the big brother, Logan Paul. You know, I mentioned this this one for this reason. He took two points away from KSI, and it was like a six-round or eighth-round fight. He injected himself so much that he decided to take two points, and that, and, and that ended up changing the result of that fight. It's crazy. Two points. I mean, I know he hit the dude when he was down, and he was punching, like, uh, from 12 to 6, like, straight down. But, I mean, two points... Yeah, that's. Uh, I, 
Ouchie McGinnis used to say to the ref, you're not going home with those points. <laughs> those points aren't for you. He would always Wait, yell that to the ref. Who said that? <laughs> What's that? Oh, it was an old trainer. One of the best uh, local trainers, Ouchie McGinnis. His name was Ouchie. And he sounds like he a trainer, about right? the dude from literally from Rocky, the smash nose. Like you would think that he made that character after him and he was just as ornery, like just as mean. And he freaking coached until his eighties. And Can buddy, I make a says, buddy loves you if he, if he, if he took you in, but he, he was Carlos rough. Ocampo. <laughs> Carlos Ocampo was in the fight. I know that Sebastián Pundora was probably like, yeah, mostly he was winning the exchanges. He was outshining Ocampo, but Ocampo wasn't like nearly like close to being done. But this guy thought he, he was going to take it upon himself to, to decide for, for them guys. I mean, he's had enough. Where actually the dude was punching back. So yeah, the dude always tries to inject himself too much in the fights. Hey, can I ask you guys a question? Will I have you on? Can somebody answer this? Um, the fight with... Gary Russell Jr. the other night with Rodriguez. What? Like, I didn't see the fight. I only saw the highlight, but they didn't show what happened. When he knocked um, Russell down, it seemed like like he got. They said later in the highlights, it says, "Oh, the the corner was putting ice on his back." What happened there? Did they, he really call timeout after he knocked him down? Does anybody know? No, no Gary went off. Oh, the bell went Russell off. Oh, okay, they didn't say no, but, that. But in here's the what Sorry. happened. Yes, Antoine, he, but here's, the youngest. Here's what happened. He dropped him, gave him the count. Bell had already wrong, so they sent him to the corner. Then, before he get the round starts, they started giving him a checkup. I mean, they're checking his glands, they're checking his fucking prostate. I mean, I don't know. They they took their sweet ass time, and you, I mean, the house why didn't they, dude? But why didn't they? Why didn't they check him out during the round? They, I mean, it after the round, so after the break's over, then they check him out. So they 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 gave him extra well, time doing that. It was bizarre. Well, that's. That was, listen, that wasn't by accident. That happens with the PBC all the time. And the Russell's a fucking, that's PBC through and through. Both his brothers, you know, and Gary, the older brother. So, oh yeah, he was the house fighter. They were going to do whatever they could to help him out. So the, I didn't see that part. So what happened? They let him go through the, the whole corner, the minute. And then when he stood up, they called the doctor in to look at him. Mm, I think well, that's what happened. Well, this I is what I think happened. Because is that I, what happened? I recall watching it. What, what's that? But, I just... Uh, I okay. believe that's this is what, what I, 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 yeah, go ahead, Rudy. No, go ahead, go ahead. I'm just saying that's, I believe that's what happened. I want, I want to see if you agree. Oh. Uh, maybe I miss, miss, okay, miss, okay. Uh, no, that's yeah, all, no, Gonzalo. No. I just wanted that question answered, brother. No, when, when I was watching it. This is, this is what happened. Oh, okay. Okay. The, the clapper, the clapper had already sounded, and when he knocked that dude down, it was uh, like at the two, two minute and 58, 59 second mark. So he knocked him down, and the bell went off, clink, clink. So now you have to give, I think, the guy the 10 seconds, and then the 10 seconds plus, is he okay? He gets up, we're going to dust off his gloves and check out if he can, uh, if, he, if he's all right to continue. But then the bell sounded, so you do all that, um, the dusting off of the gloves, all them shenanigans, plus the 10 second count, and then you take the minute. So that's where it got a little, like, confusing. But I think uh, that Ben has uh, tried to do the right thing, but I don't know if actually you get the 10 seconds plus checking out if he's okay, if he's already in the corner. That's my thing. Do you actually get the time to do that? If he's already, I, like, it's in the, between the rounds. I, I was asking if at the end of the round, like at the end when they, you know, corners out and have to take the stool out, did they wait for him to sit up, stand up and then they called the, um, the doctor in to um, look at him at the I end of his this. rest period, at the end of I, the minute rest. Well, so they yeah, extended so now, the minute is what I'm asking. That's exactly what happened. So that's what Gonzalo's uh, clarifying. And then we got official, shout out to official in the chat, clarifying oh, okay. as well. So wow. yeah, that's exactly what happened. Now, I want to give a shout out to LDBC's Most Wanted for his contribution with the Super Chat. He says, you guys give Surdo a shot at stopping Bivol. Saludos, BDA and panel. Uh, we want to talk about more about that later, LDBC's Most Wanted. For the moment, I will say I no. give him a shot. I give him a shot, but he's going to have to <laughs> redline it all day every day he's gonna have to fight the life of his life and show us things that uh he might he he hasn't shown before uh so shout out to lbc's most wanted shout out to jonathan lambarena for his contribution with the super chat he says wilder's emotional state is from ped use he gained a bunch of muscle for fury 2 fury 3 lost a bunch of muscle for Hellenius, and is acting all cc <laughs> that's what i asked jimmy the day after the fight if, if, if maybe no, that was he is, uh, dude right 
But sh- real quick, uh, real quick, Jimmy. Just our feminine. Hold on, hold on, fellas, fellas. I gotta, I gotta read. I got more super chats here. Shout out to Michael Po again for his super chat away. Well, shout out to Michael Po again for his contribution. Really appreciate it, man. He says this is for our Mayweather's hair piece. Hair is no laughing matter. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> You're going to make fun of the guy's lack of hair, man. Come on, man. But shout out to Michael Poe for his contribution. And and not last but not least, shout out to Mr. Wakandan Tax Collector. All day, he says, by the way. Uh, when Reese went into Wilder's dressing room to give instructions, everybody was naked listening to Lil Nas X doing a twerking choreography. Big mistake. <laughs> okay. Why do you have to give me that oh, visual, God. Wakanda? And I appreciate the super chat. Well, please, now you put that visual in my head and I can't shake it off. Just like Wallace shakes his ass all day, every day, man. Shout out to Wakanda, <laughs> tax collector. My goodness gracious. Shout out to everybody who donated the super chat. And by the way, we've been on for more than an hour. So I opened up the phone lines. And since it's it's a Friday show, I'm going to go on the stream yard. So if anybody wants to jump on stream yard and tell us how we can fix American boxing. So call in. Or use the stream yard if you want to call in that way. Tell us how we can fix American boxing. How can we get these American fighters to start fighting each other and improve the sport of boxing? Uh, you guys wanted to say something? Kick out the beta males. What's that? Kick out the beta males. Like, wow. And it's, listen, the stuff he even did, did you see what he did to the boxing voice? No. You know how Ness, Ness Gibbs was like, his boy, like he would go down and hang out. They go out to eat together, and they'd lay in the fucking on the ring and talk to each other with the cameras rolling. Well, so that was then. But what happened was Ness, just like to his credit, could not swallow the fucking the the, the fucking loaded gloves and and when he, like he and again in the beginning he was kind of buying into all that shit until then when it was said that there was evidence. And to his credit, he was like, "Listen, where's the evidence? You said you had." evidence and then he started seeing the how ridiculous it was and that's all he said he goes it's just it's not a good look and all he didn't go bad at him but that's all it took all mm. it took like so he was being asked at this past uh Hellenist, the fucking post the pre-fight conference and um they were asking him and who, who are you with this is wild right he says <laughs> um the boxing voice yeah okay yeah bye get out of here and he turned his head like cancel culture type shit like just like, dude, take the fucking question because your feelings were hurt, because they didn't buy your psychosis. Dude, that's like feminine shit, dude. So like, but Jimmy, like, that's wow, what I'm. Wow, man. That's what that's. I'm glad you brought that up, Jimmy, because that's that's the point of this show. What is it with all these American fighters doing that? Uh, Virgil Ortiz, look, we all like the guy because he's a predator. He's all action, but even he was doing that a little bit. Remember that a couple of weeks ago, before one of his fights, he goes. Well, because you brought up uh, or you questioned the fact that I dropped out of the fight and intimated that I might have dropped out because of weight issues, I will no longer be talking to you. It's like, come on, man. That's how we're going to do it now? Dude, he even went after, I'll be honest, he even went after a, a, like a 18-year-old kid on Twitter, like hard. Like the kid followed him and he followed this kid. I, well, he, this kid's been an idiot in the past, but that was when he was real young. He doesn't seem to be as bad now. I, Jack Alter, I'm sure a lot of people on the chat would know of him. Uh, big Triple G fan. But anyways, he was close, I guess, on Twitter with Ortiz. And he says that somebody said, told Ortiz that he said something that he didn't even say, right? That's what he said because he dropped me a DM like, I, <laughs> I don't understand. I never really even talked to this kid before. And I, oh, my God. I just asked him one question on Twitter. Anyways, long story. But dude went at him, dude. Unfollowed him. Had like, was tweeting about him. Like DMing other people because Jack was taking pictures of the DM that Virgil Ortiz was DMing with that, these other people from Twitter telling him how much of a douchebag Jack was. And I'm like, wow, is he really fucking like, wow. So is he just that involved in the Twitter world? Like, man, separate yourself from that, son. You know, first off, the kid's 18 years old. You're a professional fighter mate, on the verge of being a world champion, dude. What are you doing? Imagine, imagine yeah, if they like encountered, said, imagine if they encountered MMA champ on Twitter. Ooh, <laughs> they'd lose their shit, man. They, they'd block him off from, <laughs> they'd see him coming a mile away, man. Yeah, they got a funny way about him. And, and, and you know, when, when Virgil Ortiz, I think it was, he fought Cavaliuskas. I think Bam Rodriguez was fighting on the same night in a different part of the world. He went with Ben Rodriguez, and maybe he thought that he, he for, for whatever reason, that um, uh, Robert Garcia probably thought that Ben Rodriguez needed him most, or that was his decision. Well, they fired Robert Garcia. So that goes to show the dynamic between the, the son and the father. Man, they're quick to fire you and do things 
in a certain way if if, if they don't if, if if they don't agree with you right yes sir. and yes, sir. One, one comment mm -hmm. one comment you know they were talking between like after a fight it was the dad the son and the entourage and virgil ortiz jr said i gotta go visit my family and you know what the dad said so who am i who the fuck am i and he's like he was all upset about it and, and throwing things at his son and that's that just goes to show man that there's something funny about him and that dads try to take they they, they they try to inject themselves also in the, in the child's career too much they, they'd be doing funny things as well i'm yeah, telling you man I american boxing these guys aren't fighting each other they're crying after fights some of these guys coming out dressed like prisoners and convicts and pimps other guys fighting each other well, fighting with the media because they, they, they dare to criticize them which is what you're supposed to do right if you see you're supposed to analyze f boxers you point out the bad you point out the good nope they just want you to point out the, the good and if you point out the bad you a hater why you, why you mad why you mad that's what they always say on that's what twitter is a fucking cesspool man for the most part and that's all i hear there it when is. somebody presents facts or an argument why you mad or uh you be cloud chasing or shit. I mean, I don't, shit that I don't, I don't even under, really understand. Oh, I have to really sit down and decipher. That's it. why I don't mess with Twitter. I do not <laughs> have Twitter. Would. I don't have Instagram anymore. I don't have Facebook anymore. I, I do this to stay on the show. Uh, that's the only reason why I have Discord and I have nothing else because there's yeah. nothing in this world I want to, nothing in this type of uh, social media cyber world that I, um, I'm interested in trying to prove someone right who come to find out it's probably a 14 year old that has no experience in the in, in life yet so exactly i, I, I mean, just listen. wanted to stay up it keeps me on like what's going on in the business and and the box and it kind of but I, I try not to interact with anybody but uh yeah no it's it's an absolute cesspool and yeah listen Gross. i i like uh, uh i like i like pugilism in the chat he he at, he's one of those guys that at least he argues properly meaning he constructs an argument he's got a premise and a conclusion right but i listen i i disagree with him on this one about where he he claims it's not dying it's just going to evolve and cater to the impatient fans and cancel inside clinch fighting pugilism i i can't agree with you on the on the on that clinch it's illegal it's against the rules no hugging no wrestling man uh, and it, so by your logic, essentially, if I'm, unless I'm wrong here, you're saying more clinching would actually, what, help out boxing? Because that, that's, that would really cater to the hardcore boxing fans. Hardcore boxing fans don't, listen, the fighters that root for a specific fighter, especially if he clinches, they'll do that. Now, if he doesn't clinch, then they'll complain about the, uh, the clinching. So in other words, it's about who they root for and not necessarily enforcing the rules. You got to enforce the rules. Clinching kills boxing. It kills the momentum. Look, I'll, I'll tell you something about myself. When I spar guys that are much better than me and I run out of ideas, I start clinching. But guess what? Nobody's paying to watch me fight. <laughs> no, should they? Because I'm just a fucking guy in the gym sparring for fun. These guys are getting paid the big bucks right. in TV, on TV, or in streaming platforms, whatever. And they're not supposed to clinch. It's boring. It kills the fight. It's, it's cheating. It's it's a tactic to stall, and it's a tactic for a guy who doesn't know how to fight on the inside. And Mr. Like B, I think what sells, right? Triple G, kid from Kazakhstan, couldn't speak a lick of English, and he won't got his way all the way to HBO's fucking face of boxing there. You know what I mean? Because he was just banging dudes out. It was exciting. That's what people, at the end of the day, that's what will always sell and generate is exciting fights. You know, clinching just isn't. It isn't you can't convince anybody of it because it just isn't but i just also i want to go on twitter i also found out uh why wilder was crying uh it, they tried they he i think the richard perone thing he just brought that up to try to cover it. but uh th that big dude behind him was rubbing his back and shit i guess he whispered in his ear you sold fifty thousand pay-per-views champ so <laughs> i think that's i think that's where a lot of the um the tears came from so <laughs> hey, hey BDA, I watched this this cool thing uh yesterday. It's, it's called uh, phone booth boxing. It, they they do it in Russia. It's crazy. I don't know if you can pull that up. Maybe <laughs> it's fucking funny, man. They put them inside a phone booth and they go toe to toe. Phone booth boxing. Well, I, yeah, yeah, in Russia in Russia. It had to be Russia. It's it had to be either Russia or Japan. That's what the only. <laughs> crazy motherfucker uh, trying to toughen up putin's army <laughs> yeah man i mean hey listen uh this is gonna be a that's what i call close quarters yeah. combat hold on a second. i went crazy oh wait a minute what's this i can't play this one there's too much um salacious salaciousness going on and by the way may i say that 
this uh, clinching is, is going to be have a bad effect overall on boxing. Or if you want to use another fancy word, pernicious. Get that one, Jimmy? Pernicious. That's the that's Ooh. the word of the day. Before you jump all over me again, you fucking bastard. All right. Let me play this. Uh, uh, can we play this, actually? <laughs> <All right. laughs> so before we go uh, to the Haney thing, the, the, the clinching has been an argument and been a factor in boxing since before Hector Camacho. Uh, mm. But he definitely was one that put it to a level of um, almost like to where his, I mean, Ali he grabbed up behind the neck and, and stuff also, but Camacho in the lower weight classes was huge for hugging. Like, the second you got close enough, he'd rattle off his triple jab straight left and then would lean right into you and grab. Um, and he won a lot of fights that way until he stepped up against guys like Cruz Cesar Chavez, Felix Trinidad, and De La Hoya. They were just too strong for him. Point being the fact that now that it's like a art of part of people's uh, arsenal, then it's it's definitely not going to help the sport any. Because the, all these guys that are just going to pot shot and hold for twelve straight rounds is not going to be exciting. People, um, it's not going to drive the viewership up to where you're going to be able to charge more for commercial and airtime when these guys are fighting, and that's not going to help the sport any because ESPN is the only TV show I know of left that still slightly subsidizes fights. Excellent point, man. And and listen, L Dog and I think Bucho had the same idea. Uh, where you start using yellow cards, like in Pride FC. In Pride FC was if you hung on to the ropes when a guy tried to take you down, I think they would warn you once, and the second time, point off. So they should really only allow three clinches throughout the fight. And I know some people are gonna say, "BD, that's that's too little. That's uh, that's that's too little. That's you know, that's a small quantity of allowable clinches. That's not right." Well, guess what? It's against the rules. What are you gonna allow a guy to hit low below the belt? Well, actually, that's what they do, right? Like if you hit somebody below the belt accidentally, it's only about the to the second. Mr. BD, they're not all clinches, too. Like sometimes, if two guys are in the midst of fighting and they just close distance too much and they end up kind of chest to chest. As long as they like grab and then step away, you know, grab and just like wait for the ref. They're not fucking around with headshots. Then you know it's not purposeful. Like, is it? There's a you can tell a difference from ending ending up in a clinch into purposely looking to use it as an, a part of your, you know, fucking plan. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I like mean, listen, purposely I, grabbing a guy behind the head. In the full yeah, Nelson. yeah. So, right. I mean, some people are good at hiding it like Hopkins was, but ultimately a good referee should be able to see it. I mean, in terms of the low blows, for example, when Shakur Stevenson fought Conceição, and I showed it in some of the clips, well, maybe not in the video that I did, but you, there's evidence where you can see the referee, he's standing right in front of the, the low blow, and he he did nothing. All right, uh, real quick, man, because I opened up the phone lines here now, uh, so our people can call in and let us know how we can fix American boxing and what's wrong with American boxing, first of all. Shout out to Brave for his contribution to the Super Chat. He says, phone booth boxing, a.k.a. Devin Haney's worst nightmare. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you guys saw, but I played some uh, a little clip of it. We'll go back to it after we're done with this. Uh, but yeah, man, that's what the... <laughs> I was laughing my ass off when I saw it. So shout out to Brave for his contribution to the Super Chat. Let's go to the uh, phone lines real quick here. And also we got people on StreamYard. Stay on the line. Let's go to 301. 301, you're on the air. 301, what's on your mind? Oh shit, hold on a sec. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey, 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 what's up, BD? What's you up? Who is this? Me? Yeah, who is this? Uh, it's Irish Andre Ward. Oh, Irish um, Andre Ward. What's up, mate? Coincidental. Hey, yeah, coincidentally, it's a great topic. I'm calling as one of the uh, recently uh, blocked people from Dan Raphael's Twitter. Oh. Um, all for uh, just uh, explaining to him his own modus operandi of relaying bullshit facts, you know, like he was tweeting like, like um, 20 minutes before uh, the Coppinger guy reported that Bud signed the fight with Avenision. He uh, tweeted out, you know, um, sources say that the fight between Crawford and Spence is moved to February 4th. And he was getting roasted in the comments. Like people were like, so what are you going to say when it's moved to April? And what are you going to say when it's then moved to June, you know? Um, and I, I, I said something similar. And he blocked me, <laughs> as usual. But, um, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm the kind of guy who likes to read into things. And um, as much as I, like, often disagree with Max Kellerman, one of his better takes is that boxing is like a, it's like a, um, a sandbox or like a testing ground for, like, technology in certain aspects of American culture. Like he gave us an example of, like, the radio and television. Uh, boxing was one of the first to do this. And you see it now, like, sports gambling. But basically, I think the question of how to, like, 
fix American boxing is a bit related to like the problems we see in American culture where, you know, we have these like high polarization uh, that's based on like extremely high context cultures. Like you have to amass so many different, you know, points of view and it makes it impossible to talk to someone who doesn't have the same worldview as you, you know, like the Germans called it the wall show tongue, you know? Uh, All right, listen, anyway, listen, listen. I, I, it sounds like you've been. It sounds like you've been reading some Marshall McLuhan or something. Break it down for, for those of us that don't understand what the fuck you're talking mm-hmm. about. Man. All right, all right, all right, right. Um, yeah, I mean, like, I, I think basically, one, you, you have to get like the 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 um, the, the mismanaged kind of like dead bureaucracy of the PBC out of there. You know, for one, I think that that's like step one. Like, if that goes away, then maybe we have like a chance. Um, and two, like, I think like referees just need to do their job. Like, I think that's what we talk about all the time. Uh, mm-hmm. Like, you were complaining about Jack Reese. Well, kind of, like, mitigating about him. But I remember a fight between uh, Andre Ward and, like, uh, I forget, uh, I think Rodriguez, like, Edwin Rodriguez or something. Oh, yes, yes, And yes, the yes, guys yes. were, like, clinching, and they were, like, uh, fighting, like, really dirty. And Jack Reese was like, okay, if you guys don't knock this the hell off, I'm going to suspend both of your pays. And then they didn't do that shit for the rest of the fight. <laughs> and I think that's what the, the refs need to do. They, they, like, you know, it shouldn't be a disqualification. It shouldn't be a record. It should be like, if you keep this up, you're not getting paid. And I guarantee you that, like, all these guys will uh, fall in line. Actually, like, uh, in MMA, Adesanya uh, said something similar. It was like, a lot of guys miss weight intentionally because they only take, like, 5%, 10% of their purse. And he's like, that's mm. not enough. Take, like, 30 Take 50% of the purse. You take that, they'll never miss weight again. You know, interesting. Hey, hey that sounds so like I a think good idea it, to me. It's monetary penalties. That's you got to right. enforce it this way. That's right. It needs to be severe. I get what you're saying. Well, listen, Irish, thank you for your call, man. Yeah. We're going to move on to another call, man. But that's an excellent point, man. And we, again, we're going we're gonna to talk more well, about that because well, we. One more. Yes, yes, yes. Sorry, like, well, one more thing. Like, in suspending the pay, you suspend like, the fighter's pay. What you give the, the commissioning bodies are cut so that they're independent of this. So they have an incentive to actually enforce rules against the fighters, you know? Mm-hmm. Cause well, they have some know, sway in the sport, like independent of all these guys. And they should be able to get like a revenue source. That's uh, like independent of the promoters ability to, you know, fuck them over. So they can actually be a governing body. I think that would be like uh, one step. Forward. Yeah. But the problem is, anyway, yeah. but the problem is though, brother, but the problem is every state has a sanctioned body. So you know what I mean? You need one. No, no, uh, that's the commission, right? I'm talking about the sanctioning. Oh, body. okay. The sanction the fights, right? Oh, the oh, the sanctioning board. Oh, I thought you were talking about the state. All right, the commission. I'm having a hard time hearing you. All right. Never mind. I oh, gotcha. My bad. Irish. Oh, yeah. Thank you. For, <laughs> thank you for your call, Irish Andrew Ward, and uh, stay merry out there, right, man? All right. All right. Take it easy, man. All righty. You guys are the same. Bye. Take it easy, buddy. Irish Andrew Ward. <laughs> All right. Let's go to uh, three five one. Three five one, you're on the air. Three five one, what's on your mind? What's up, fellas? Can you hear me, Michael Paul? Oh, Michael, what's up, man? Can you hear me? Not much. I got a new well, phone. This thing's crackling up again. I can hear you fine, man. I can hear you just fine. I know, I know, but on on your end, you guys are kind of crackling up. Oh fuck! Oh, no, I was, I was trying to make a joke with my damn iPhone. I was uh, going back a few weeks, said uh, the Matrix owed you money. I said, well, there you give this for you. You straightened out. But uh, anyway, yeah, boxing's unfixable at this point unless you start from the ground up with like a real rich person. And I don't see anybody investing in that sport right now. Nobody so, at all. Man, it's sad, but, uh, but I mean, back in the early two, I don't know if Jimmy Room probably remembers before uh, Bob Barron bought uh, top or got top rank going ESPN wouldn't even like tell you boxing results it was considered a non-sport at, at uh, maybe it was late 90s early 2000s so I, I don't know who's going to bring it back but uh, yeah it's not doing good well, Michael, I mean, I, I, I got to ask you, man, why do you still watch boxing? For the, because for the most part, you do believe that most fights are, are already... Because like, I love taking... it, cause I, cause I know that because it's real, and I love it, but I just don't love the, the, the stuff in between. Because you know too much, it's like, oh, God, why did that have to happen? And you get pissed off, and it's like... But that's what I'm saying, It's like though, an because... OCD thing, you want to pull... 
But that's why I'm asking. I can't pull away from it, PDA. When you say, when you say it's real. I want to watch it. I want want it to succeed. Right, but you say it's real in the the sense that it's it's got a real attitude. It's a real sport. But you're one of the guys that feels that most major fights are. No, it's a real sport. Yes, yes. Right, but you do feel that most fights are. controlled by the powers that be. But you do believe that most top fighters are taking dives. I hear a lot of things. I watch it and make my own. I don't just outright just believe anybody. I make up my own mind after watching it. Because I wanted to ask you, I don't know if you commented uh, on this. Is, poss- the, is it possible? Yeah, sure. Well, I was one to uh, tell you about the one, because I'm, I'm an open-minded guy. I've said it before, and I'll keep repeating it. I, I do want to watch, uh, see the evidence before I make a determination. Nope. The wilder Hellenius fight. Okay. What did you think about that one? Uh, I'll tell you what. I... <laughs> It looked like he was punching him with both hands at the same time because everybody was saying it was a left hook. But then from a different angle, it was a right hand. All I'm saying is it could have hit him hard enough, but how many people could have gotten up but didn't? Think about that for a second. Mm -hmm. How many of those guys went there to lose, could have gotten up, but just said, why? So we'll never know. And this is my problem with boxing. You you have a hard time rating people when you don't know what you're watching. And I'm I I like I said I love the sport and I hate to give up on it, but you know, it's so, too much of a I mean, crazy sport. That's I, I, I do well, agree listen, with that, man. I paid enough, and I figure figure you know I don't know. I, don't know. I like watching well, listen, your, your show. It, it's entertaining. Well, thank you, man. <laughs> you thank know? you. But but he, I gotta say something here. Uh, Michael Stock uh, calling us long distance. I don't want to keep him on too long because it's gonna uh, fuck up his rate. So uh, nah, dude, don't worry about it. Dude. Dude, it's not all even, right, all right. It's not even, won't even come out to five euros, man. Oh, okay. And I was blessed with uh, a little bit more luck in this morning, but uh, you're well, not asking for much, older, like Errol Spence. As he is, uh, he's getting he's, he's getting to that age where uh, you know the girls are coming around and stuff, and that's starting to freak me out. So. I don't know what that means, but uh, listen, Michael, anything else you want to say before uh, we uh, go it on? Means, uh, it means, be ca- means as a father, be careful. I don't want to oh, get okay, some okay, girl okay, 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 okay. To I got you. I got you. I thought you were talking about some girls coming over, like uh, like uh, the Biden no, son. No, no, you know, with the, okay. no, 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 You're not pulling a Hunter Biden <laughs> right, over guys, there. Listen, it's been great. Jimmy uh, and who, whoever's on, uh, take it easy tonight, and I'll res- listen to the rest of the show, guys. All right, we got Gonzalo too. Yeah, hey, Gonzalo, hey, Jimmy. Later, right, thank Michael. you. Oh, thank you, Michael. Gonzalo, Jimmy. Craig. All right, Michael. T- thank you for calling in, man. Always appreciate your support, man. Really. From the heart. Uh, no problem, my friends. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Have a nice night. Thanks, Mike. You right. too, man. I was going to say, for some reason, the first thing that came to my mind, because we were talking about Hunter Biden and his uh, extracurricular activities, I was going to say from the loins. I said, wait a minute, what am I talking about here? All right, let's go <laughs> to... Uh, oh, shit. Okay, hold on. We got... Uh, let me go to the stream yard. Everybody on, on the phone, stay there. I want to get to the, the stream yard too. We got people calling in internationally. Uh, Kenshiro on the stream yard. Kenshiro, thank you for dropping by, man. How do we fix American boxing? Or if you alternatively want to ask, you know, what's wrong with American boxing? This is this is just my opinion about American boxing. <clears throat> right now, predominantly, American, American boxing right now is dominated by Black people who either do one of three things. One of these three things they mostly do. It's one, they co- mm. either a combination or one of these three things. Either they run like Floyd, they clinch like it's a Muay Thai match, or they refuse to fight each other. Nigga, what? The problem is you're not you're not seeing enough of Jimmy's people or proper Latinos or Mexicans coming through. And mm. the only way to do it, if, if black people, boring blacks fight like that, everybody can fight for the boxing titles and American blacks can fight for the African-American belts and at least that way you get that shit out of the way and you bring the good times back to America. Otherwise, England, the Eastern Europe and Mexico is going to keep ruling. Interesting, interesting. All right, that's one man's take and uh, the solution, any other solutions? Like, for example, when it comes to the actual action in the ring, uh, the clinching, the uh, running. Well, I'm, I, I, J- J- Jimmy mentioned a very valid point, and when he said it, I thought, oh, yeah, he's actually right. Now, I'm sure, yeah, as Jimmy's right, in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, when people would clinch or hit you in the back of the head like a rabbit punch, they'd deduct points. Why all of a sudden now are they too scared of black lives matter? I mean, what, what's going on? Why are they so scared to now deduct points? Next, yeah, I don't know. It's uh, 
maybe the, again it's they get picked by the promoters too sometimes you know that goes on so maybe they or the or the the, the sanctioning body has a say as well so they want to please those guys they want to keep them nice and pleased and uh, they want it's always about the next job it's about it, they're like script writers in hollywood it's always about the next job so they get a slobber all over the director's dick and it's almost sim something similar here in I boxing I, I think what they should do, and now I know, I know. I mean, I found this out sort of a little while back. In boxing, they they do glove size and ring size and referee. People should be all right. I pick one thing, you pick one thing. Don't think because you're the A side of Floyd Mayweather, you get to pick everything. It should be I pick one, you pick one, and we try to make it as fair as possible. You know, if you want a bigger ring, then I want a referee who will let me get in there and smash the shit out of you. You know, and and pick stuff like at least that way. Then you try and do as as fair as possible. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. well there you go man that's Kinshiro's take man uh, anything else you want to say last thing and you and it's funny with when it comes to obviously boxers get paid more well the, the top boxers get paid a lot of money compared to UFC today oh, UFC uh, Dana White has said UFC fighters and their teams are no longer allowed to bet on their own selves and fighters mm. so that's another income he's stopping so what's going on with boxing I don't know well, there you go, man. That's uh, one man's take. Then again, I'm pretty sure a lot of Americans are going to say, well, wait a minute, this guy's from England. What the fuck does he know? We don't care about what the, what the rest of the world says, but hey, uh, that's a sensible take from Kishiro, if I've ever heard one. Kishiro, man, thank you so much for calling in, man. We'll catch you on the next one, right, man? Stay safe, guys. You too, man. Take it easy. All right, let's go to uh, Telk... Take it easy, Telk Kishiro. Telkine's Pancretion. Telkine's, are you there? What's up, guys? What's up, man? Yes, I'm here. What's your take on yes, American um, boxing? Oh, uh, you say? What's your take on American boxing? Um, the question really should be uh, what's wrong with American boxing. The problem is the majority of uh, American boxing is fixed. It's kayfabe like WWE. Oh. Um, you know you have your A sides who are um just telling uh telling the other guys or the B sides people you know, this is how it goes or the fight's off. So, um, yeah, it, it kind of goes like that. So how do we fix it, man? You end up fixing it by bringing in, I'd say, a centralized sanctioning body. Get rid of these WBA, IBF, WBO, get away, get rid of all of it, and you end up um, enforcing, like having referees enforcing the rules for what they are. But you know what? Listen, that's how you about the, talking about the national or international commission that's going to oversee everything. People have been talking about it for years. Some people claim that it wouldn't work. Uh, I, I believe it was who was it that was saying, "Look, the government can't even fucking handle a lot of these institutions properly." Now they're going to handle boxing. Which is uh, is uh, it's infested with a bunch of sharks. So I don't know, man. People have been saying that for years. Uh, maybe in on, in theory it would work. Uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. If you have, if you have, uh, the more you have uh, sanctioning bodies like the WBC ran ran by um, Papa Mauricio, as I like to call him, um, you're you're gonna have you're gonna have this uh, this high level corruption. No matter how you look, uh, no how, matter how you shake it, it's going to. It's all going to be thrown in the trash. And um, you're, they're making up the rules as they go. They're the referees, or the referees aren't even doing their jobs. Hell, nobody is doing their jobs. So, <laughs> yeah. That's a good. That's a dire way of putting it, man. That's nobody's doing their jobs and they're getting paid either way, or in fact, sometimes getting promotions. So, uh, yeah, that's a that's a sad state of affairs, man. Well, listen, Telekines, we got to move on, man. But anything else you want to say? Um, shout out to uh, shout out to Devin. I don't know if he's uh, on. I don't know if he's on. Shout out to Jimmy. Shout out to Gonzalo. Shout out the boxing chief. Um, shout out to. Everybody in there, YTBC, and shout out to you, BDA. Well, thank you, man. I appreciate the telecans, and thank you for calling in. We'll catch you on the next one, man. All right, buddy. Appreciate it. All right, thank you. Take it easy. All right, let's go to a phone call here. Let's go to 226. Don't forget to hit the like, fellas. Hit the like, hit the like, hit the like. Uh, 226, you're on the air. Two, two, no, hold on a second. You're not on the air yet. 226, you're on the air. What's on your mind? Yeah, yeah, fellas. Can you hear me? Oh, it's the Slugmeister. What's up, Slugger? 
Hey, what's going on? Uh, so you guys uh, got the show going on over here? That's right. Well, what are we talking about today? Oh, come on, I just want to say shout out to that dude who just said that to everybody. I just oh, want yeah, to say yeah. that. I was on mute and I could get to the phone. But anyways, go. Hey, I, I, I want to talk about Americans. You, you want to talk about Americans? I'll That's right. Question. Go ahead, man. You want to talk about Americans? How to make the boxing better for America? Is that what you're asking? The question is, what's wrong with American boxing and how do we fix it? Why is it going down the drain? I'll tell you, what, I'll tell you what's wrong. What's wrong with American boxing is that the, the pastime legends are not the ones taking over, right? Like, I'm talking the Timothy Bradley, you know, the Andre Bertos. Those guys should be running American boxing. Those guys are the legends what? of the past. And uh, instead, we got, uh, the, the, we, we got the five queens taking over instead. That's the problem. Know. Well, I agree about the, the the five queens and all that, but, but, but why'd you have to bring up Andrew Berto? Because uh, Andrew Berto was a legend, and uh, and uh, Barbara Guerrero is a legend, and uh, Timothy Bradley; those are all legends. They're American legends, and if they were the ones uh, running the show, uh, the show would be a whole lot better. You know what I mean? Slugger, have you been uh, drinking? Uh, uh, maybe you're being facetious, or you've been drinking too many uh, Molson Lights. Is that what's going on here? No, 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 sir. I don't indulge in the alcohol, and I don't smoke the marijuana. That's 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 all. That's all illegal. I don't do any of that stuff. <laughs> that's a good answer. That's a good answer, especially on the on the public line here, like the one we've got. Well, uh, okay. So, how do we fix it, Slugger? How do we fix it? That's the main question. I, here. I, 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 that's what I. That's what I'm telling you. That's what I'm telling you. You got the wrong guys running the show. You're supposed to have the Timothy Bradleys and the Andre Bertos running ah, okay. the show. They, those are the guys. And then the Pauli Malinagis, I'm sorry. The Pauli Malinagis as well. Though you get real American boxes. Sluggy, you, might, you might want to try that's, drinking. That's how we... <laughs> <laughs> what did you say, Jimmy? Hey, Jimmy, what did you say? I just busted your stones, dude. What I just breaking you? balls, bro. I just said you might want to try drinking because yeah, of Roberto, man. It's just, that's killing me, dude. You got me laughing with that one. <laughs> Uh, come on, Jimmy. Come on, come on. Let's be professionals over here, right? That's right, you Jimmy. Yeah, thank you. That's what I've been. That's what I've been telling Jimmy all along. You gotta be professional. All right. Because I, 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 Jimmy, I come Jimmy, up with a word all, every once in a while, man. No, no. Let me tell Jimmy sign that B, that BDA's never told him. Did you know that every time I call into the show, BDA pays me fifteen hundred dollars? Did you know that BDA actually pays me to call into the show? I read. <laughs> I know. I, I trust. I have to make change from the ten grand he pays me. You got a point? Yeah, yeah, he's got no, you there, Slugger. Really he's got you there, Slugger. You, you, you weren't expecting that, were you, Slugger? Let me call in. Huh? Yeah. Well, listen, listen. I, I, may I just, I just want to say, I always treat Slugger with kids' gloves because I don't want to piss him off. Because if I piss him off, I know he's going to go pick a fight over there in Winnipeg or wherever the fuck he's at. So I like to treat him nice. I like to, uh, I like that he walks out of here with his point when he, he let his point out across, and uh, that's it. Just you know. I want him to live happy when he hangs up the phone. So, Slugger, hope you're happy, and uh, thank you for calling in. All right, man? Thanks, Slugger. Anytime, anytime. Take it easy. Peace you too, out, man. Jimmy. Take it peace, easy. Peace. peace out. Andre Berto. All right, let's go to uh, another phone call here. Don't forget to hit the <laughs> like, fellas. Hit the like, hit the like, hit the like. 573. Oh, it's a weird number. 573, you're on the air. 573, what's on your mind? Five seven three, you're on the air. Going once. Yes, Go. yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, man. Okay, I'm having a little difficulty hearing you guys. I apologize. I'm calling from Columbia, South America. Oh. And I'm the father of a 14-year-old that is a boxer. And these problems, uh, I think to fix any of these problems in boxing, we we have to look at some situations that boxers face today. Me being the father of a 14-year-old boxer, I'm scared to death to come back up to North America. Uh, to Who's going to try to get a hold of him? Uh, Promotion-wise, what's going to go on there? Because the whole, the whole sport is a rotten stink of corruption, and it has been for years. And if we go back and we look at the history of the sport, uh, Sonny Liston was the first WBC champion. 
uh, he was handed the belt. Uh, the, before it became the before the WBA became the WBA, it was called the uh, NBA. And uh, each time a new organization is being created to correct these problems, it's created more corruption. So we've got to have some type of governing body, but it needs to be uh, something akin to the NFL. Uh, where promoters would have votes or something like that, but there would have there needs to be a standard commissioner. And I believe you said earlier in the program that uh, getting the government involved would be a disaster, and of course it would. Uh, I don't have the answers, but I believe that some type of a uh, program like the NFL, where all of the owners uh, have votes, you got a commissioner, and uh, then you have a commission that hands down fines and things like that would be the best route to go. But uh, other than that, I don't know what what could actually be done. And as the father of a young boxer, <clears throat> this is the kid I've got is very, very good. And uh, I'm scared to death of promoters and who to trust, what to do. And it's just a sad state of affairs in boxing. But that's about all I got to say. But I just I wish I had the answers. But other than some type of commission uh, that all of the promoters I, I would say be to, the to their authority, I don't know of no other direction. Well, can I tell you, brother, if you're looking to get your kid into pro boxing, what you want to do is you don't want to try to reach out to any, no matter who the promoter is, what you want to do is establish a relationship with a sports attorney and have the attorney deal with them. And that way you won't get fucked over. The attorney's not going to let you get fucked over. The only thing that sucks is you have to use your, you know, cost a few dollars to like, but always speak to an attorney when you, and especially in uh, inter, introductions in any kind of contracts. That's all, brother. And you're just going to have to follow your intuitions. And best of luck with your son. Well, Thank you so, so much. All right, well, well, well listen, 573, you're calling long thank distance. Thank you so much. Yeah, okay. man, thank you, Jimmy. You're calling long distance, so I don't want to keep you along too uh, too long because otherwise the phone bill is going to, you're going to want to kill me. So uh, sensible call. I like the fact that you gave some answers, but that you also said you, you're unsure about how it's going to happen because that's the reality. Nobody has the top answer. So thank you so much, man. Call back next time and good luck with you and your son, man. Really appreciate you calling in. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Bye-bye. Take it easy. Colombia. They hit hard down there in Colombia, man. I've, I've said it before, man. I don't know what they feed people down there in Colombia, but there's a lot of power punchers. Uh, they need That's somebody. One, one day they need to develop, actually, though, because they hit hard, but they don't usually go far, man. So uh, I hope, I, I, I assume that what he's talking about is that eventually he's going to take his kid back to the U.S. because he sounded American. To the I mean, U.S., right? Yeah, yeah right. thank you. I, I I thought I was losing my mind. You're saying Columbia. I'm like, God damn, he sounded like you was from fucking Knoxville, Tennessee. I mean, he obviously... <laughs> you know what I mean? I he obviously, said Southern yeah. draw myself. Um, yeah, okay. I thought I lost it. I'm like, yeah. oh my God, I'm losing my mind. <laughs> but, but, uh, Columbia. but real I quick... Real... Call and I thought, like someone's Uncle Jack called in and... Yeah, but real quick, just you know? because we got to go into another phone call, but that's that's what, Jimmy, the, the, the advice you gave him... That's sort of the route uh, Sugar Ray went through, right? Sugar Ray Leonard, he had a, a lawyer yes. who didn't really know much about boxing, I think, and he learned on the ropes, but he never fucked Ray over, as far as I know. He knew exactly. business, and he knew how to deal legal with contracts, and that's all that mattered, because Ray mm. was the star, and that guy just negotiated everything on Ray's behalf. Mike Trainer uh -huh. was his name, and he, even though his name was Trainer, he wasn't a trainer, he was just an attorney, but... Oh. He did all the d business dealings for Ray Leonard when it came time to get in the ring. Mm -hmm. And, that, okay, and that's you. what's gone wrong with these PBC kids, too. He hasn't signed anybody else. And the reason being, like Steve said, it, it, just look at um, what Kid Austin said. His father was an intelligent dude, sat down, read the contract. Because, hey, because he has a father involved in his life, which is always a good thing. But... <laughs> Knew well, enough to read the contract, and you see what it was. It was a disaster. Of course, no young blue chip is going to go to that bullshit. So mm -hmm. he played it out. Back in the beginning, before everybody saw how it was going, he sold them all. None of these dudes took it to a lawyer. 
man, if you saw what he did with my career with Floyd sitting there, probably took him out an expensive restaurant, probably out in a boat in L.A. and sold him this, you know what I mean? Sold him all the dream. And they signed their fucking lives away. Ten-year contracts. They have no autonomy. Ugh. But no, anyway, so. That sounds that's like a nightmare. That's why I need a lawyer. Fuel. Hey, listen, before uh, we got to go to more phone calls here, but let me go to the StreamYard. You can use the phone or uh, number or you can use the StreamYard. We got Amok waiting in there. Amok, are you there? Amok. Oh, he probably went to take a break. Maybe we left him waiting too much. All right, Amok, stay there, stay there, stay there. Let me go to the phone lines. And everybody on the phone lines too, stay there as well. Uh, let's go to who is here? 760. 760, you're on the air. 760, what's on your mind? Hey, what's up, Mr. VDA? This is um, Don Chingazos. Hola, Don and Chingazos. The way you fix American boxing is um, first you got to drain the swamp. Let's be real. Hmm. Drain the swamp. You got to get rid of all Heyman first. Because everybody knows that guy is very bad for boxing. He's winning boxing right now with his PBC. And you also got to get rid of refs like Kenny Bayless, you know? <laughs> that always favor um, back foot bitches. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. yeah, I like this guy. That type of referee, and and you also gotta get rid of the secondary belts, you know, because that's bad. And yeah, going back to point. a ref, then we need to get better Excellent refs point. that are gonna start deducting points right away when when they start um clinching, excessive clinching. You know what? You brought up the one thing that we had forgotten and to talk they, about too, which was the belts. Or some people mentioned it, but yeah, get rid of all the at least the secondary belts. Fucking WBA, and then they got two versions of it. And the WBC, they got five versions. The franchise belt. I mean, come on. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Because let's be real, they're not gonna get rid of the sanctioning bodies. They're they're too established already. So at least get rid of the, of the secondary belts because it's too much. It, it confuses exactly. the casuals. Awesome. All right, well, you, you, like, you know, like Giovanni uh, Davis calling himself a fucking world champion, being announced as a world champion when he's a unified world champion in the same division? It's so insane. Yeah, but they need to also start uh, favoring pressure fighters and boxer punchers more because they make these pay per views and the casuals, they, they, the casuals, they're not trying to watch um, boring boxing, you know. The hardcore fans, they're going to buy everything. But they need to get the, the casuals to start liking boxing. And the casuals, they're in it for, for action. They want to see real fights in there. Not, not, uh, not no fucking Devin Haney or no Shaker Stevenson type of fight, you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit done with the casuals, and man. But you, that, that's some good points there. You got some good points there, Don Chingasos. Uh, we do have to move on to another phone call here. So uh, anything else you want to say before we move on? Uh, 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 yeah, th that's all I got to say, Mr. VJ, and keep up the good work, I guess. All right. Later. Thank you again for thank you again for being on on the uh, UFO episode last night. I had a fun doing that one. All right, uh, let, let's go. To, okay, Amok, are you there? Yeah, I'm back. All right. Sorry. Shout out to Amok. Thank you for dropping by, man. What's your take on all of this? How do we fix American boxing? Well, I brought it up uh, multiple times to you off stream. Uh, we need to evolve and adapt the uh, card system like uh, like in soccer. Because mm -hmm. um, I really don't think it's an American thing. Uh, Catterall did it against uh, Josh Taylor. The, mm -hmm. the clinching, if you guys remember. Uh, Parker also did it a little bit against Ruiz Jr. Uh, Horn did it a little bit against uh, Pacquiao, and he's this, you know, smaller guy. Um, the card system, it, what they can do, uh, they can start, because uh, in 1FC, I don't know if you guys are familiar with 1FC, it's a fighting organization with multiple combat sports. Mm -hmm. What they do when they hand out a yellow a yellow card, uh, the fighter receives a ten percent purse deduction. So if they're doing like excessive clinching or you know low blows or any other type of fouls, the the ref will hand out a a yellow card. I really think they really need to do that and implement that in boxing. Uh, I'm also an advocate for real time scoring, but that's just me. That's a good point. Now, I, I take it you watch some MMA. Are they pretty um, strict in enforcing, at least in the UFC, for example, when you know when somebody tries to get a takedown and the guy grabs the fence? How many 
how many uh, warnings do they give a guy before they actually take a point away for doing that? Uh, yes and no. It, it depends. If it's a pay-per-view star like John Jones and Conor McGregor, they'll give them warnings, and, and then they might decide to give them a point deduction. But for the general rule, they, yes, they do. All right, that good. Then okay, then that's why we need. Then we're going back to the Pride FC days, and like you said, one FC. Do some cards. Yeah, yeah. One cards. FC does it more strict. Yeah, one FC does it way more strict. They they do purse deduction. That's what we need to do. That's what boxing it's a visual. Needs to do, no? I agree. It's the that's visual of it. It's the visual. The fact that you're pulling out a card, yeah. and the fact that the one where you finally get a point off or whatever, you know, red. Well, actually, red would be disqualification. But I mean, you get what I'm saying. The fact that you pull out a card. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. A modified, a modified card system. And, right. You know, I get it. Sure. I love it, man. I love it. Well, I'm like, we gotta move on to another call, man. But anything else you want to say before we move on? Um, that'll be all. Thanks for having all me. All right. Thank you, Amak. Thank you for calling in, man. Always appreciate it. All right. Let's go to another phone call here. Let's go to. Uh, 212, 212, you're on the air. 212, what's on your mind? Yeah, what's up, uh, BDA? What's up, man? It's Joe. Oh, Joe, what's w up, what's Joe? What's up? W what's up? I, I, I thought you were paying me, uh, I was supposed to be getting paid $5,000 every time I called. Well, listen, uh, your quota, your Q rating has been going down a little bit, so your quota has decreased. What can I tell you? It's Hollywood, baby. So so what happened? Uh, my, my, uh... <laughs> Joe, are you okay, man? As much anymore. <laughs> are you okay, Joe? You sound a little, uh, I don't know if you're under the weather or a long day. What's going on here? Yeah, I'm a little under the weather, but I'm a little upset. I feel I'm getting underpaid. <laughs> well, listen, uh, bring bring on I the heat I and gonna, the. I was supposed. To, <laughs> I thought listen, I was supposed to be getting paid five thousand dollars to call. You need to review your contract, man. I don't know what to tell you, but Joe, first of all, missed you over at the uh, second Renaissance. You and Jimmy, I sent you both guys invites, and you never answered. Second of all, uh, how do we fix boxing, American boxing? First of all, do you think there's Liar. anything wrong with American boxing? Well, what they have to start doing is start taking points away from clinching. This is a joke. It's ruining the sport of boxing. They, they, they have to start taking points away. That's what everyone's I been mean, saying so far. Agree? Who's been calling in? Uh, we agree. We, right, guys? We're all on the same path here, I think. Oh yeah, of course. I mean, it, it's a joke. The point when they are actually going to have to go it's to getting... finally after so many point deductions um, that they're going to be a disqualification because Haney was far enough ahead they could have taken seven points away and it would have been a draw. <laughs> I mean, so you, it, it can't just be point deductions. It's also going to have to be point deductions with either a disqualification or enough point deductions to where it's going to cost them the fight to where they realize they're going to. But even then, they're just blaming the referee. They won't accept accountability for themselves. So that's why I like I, I do uh, agree with the call that we need to do something to punish them for it, and I like the call the guy on Streamyard Amok that says a financial penalty would probably work better because everybody's all about the buck, and so if it's going to hurt their purse, they'll probably, they'll probably listen first. But I, do like, I, I agree with the caller. I agree with the caller that it's got to be a penalty for it to where they're going to take it seriously. All right. Well, there you go, Joe. Hopefully that answers your question, man. Uh, we do have to move on to another phone call, man. But anything else you want to say before we move on? All right. Good, great, great show as usual. I'll let Thank you guys you, go on. Thank you for your call, man. Take it easy out there. Hope you feel better. Good luck, guys. All right. Thank you, man. Have a good one. All right. All right. Let's go to... And by the way, I did invite you, Jimmy. I'm not kidding. I sent the invite and... Uh, I think you replied, go fuck yourself. I think that's what you said. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Okay. Now listen, not everybody can make it. Not everybody can make no, it. No, dude, I was, I, I, I was traveled yesterday. Sorry. Oh, okay. No, that's okay. That's okay, man. You know, it was a good show, though, but we'll be back. We got to do another uh, freeform show on Second Renaissance where, because we were talking about that the other day. Remember, we were talking about doing a, uh, like a freeform show where everybody just talks about whatever they want uh, this Halloween season, come up with some, uh, some of their own personal paranormal experiences. Uh, let's go to... Six three zero six three zero. You're on the air. Six three zero. What's on your mind? Hey, BDA. Uh, 
So I'll say, uh, that guy before who called about uh, his gig from Columbia, he may have been talking about Columbia like Missouri, because there's a bunch of places just named Columbia uh -huh. and, uh, with a southern accent. So, who knows? I thought so. But uh, so. how can we fix boxing? That's uh, going to come down to what do you think is wrong with boxing? I mean, so if you say the officials are the oh. things that are wrong with boxing, then, well, the officials, they're, they're sanctioned by the state, so they're licensed by the state. Uh, I, I've actually been looking into becoming a judge myself. Um, mm. I, I'm an attorney by trade, but I look into this and I say, well, you know, if I have a problem with scoring, why don't I become a judge? Why don't we become judges? I mean, you can ref soccer games, you can ref football games. Why can't we get licensed to become judges? Yeah, it's a long road, but if we care about the sport, we'll invest in the sport with our time and our effort. And hey, you get the best seat in the house, right? And you get scores that you can live with. So I think that's one way to do it. Um, aside from that, I mean, like, in terms of, like, the business aspect of boxing, that, that's just screwed up because these, there's so many different aspects of boxing where it's like you, you have contract law, you have corporate law, you have tax law, you have regulatory issues. Like, mm -hmm. for example, uh you know, are boxers employees of the promotion companies or are they independent contractors? Because that's mm. a big difference in how you want to negotiate things and how much rights you have. Uh, in terms something. of regulation, there's regulation of the sport in terms of what's allowed and what's not, and that's broken down state by state. So, for example, like uh, GGG, Canelo, right? Uh, Triple G's camp had a problem with how Canelo was wrapping his, his hands based upon what the rules were of Nevada. Uh, Mayweather uh, regularly skirts the fact that you can't dip under somebody's waist when you're fighting the other person, but he does it anyway. McGregor tried to get around that when he fought Mayweather by doing a hammer fist, which is technically allowed, but not really. But regardless, you know, uh, if there's so many different things. Can we fix it? Sure. But it'll take a lot of work. So. Well, it's interesting that you brought that uh, perspective from an attorney because it does seem like, you know, most of us don't know the law or the laws, that the myriad of laws that are out there. So maybe we do need to start getting some people that actually know what they're talking about together and say, hey, is there a loophole or something that we can use to enforce some of these things? And here's the other uh, thing I wanted to ask you, man, as an attorney. Uh, there, there were people mm -hmm. I was reading on, on, on the internet, there was people that are YouTube moderators. They have to sort to the, the millions of videos that are uploaded every day and they have to s sit there and watch snuff films and, and you know, just the, the most horrible thing you can imagine and they have to sort through all of that. Some of them are now suing YouTube for being forced to watch that. Can I sue Devin Haney and all the other clinch masters for the sexual <laughs> assault that I have to see on TV? Is there a, is there a legal basis for that? <laughs> No, oh, man, you can sue anybody for anything, but can you win? Eh, you know, I, that, that, that's the real question. All right. Well, I'll call Rafael Shapiro and I'll set something up. Uh, anything else you want to say before we move on? I really enjoy your show, man. I really enjoy hearing from you guys, and uh, it kind of makes my night and makes my day. So oh, I well, hope I can you, call in more often. Call whenever you want, man. Thank, thank you, you for much. your call, man. Really appreciate it. Take care. Take care. Yeah. BD, I was going to mention, I, I think the guy that the, the guy that call, called from Colombia, yeah, he's from South America because he said, he said South America, and that was the reason he was wondering. Oh, that's um, right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, his hang-up hang was when he brought his son from over there to the United States. That's what he was concerned about. That's yeah, I'm right, over here. Dude. When I bring him to the United States, am I going to have trouble promoting him? Because people over here, you know, they're kind of crazy and, you know, they're snakes. Yeah, he, he was calling long like, distance. He's an expat. He's an expat, just like me. A person uh, living outside their native country. There's many of them. Many, many like veterans them, yeah. like me that live many places in the world. Brothers in arms. Brothers yeah, in that, arms. Yeah, That's it. Yeah. yeah. It's more hey, common did. than what people think, man. There's thousands, <laughs> well, maybe, maybe hundreds of thousands. Well, I'm no, thinking we, of an well, expat You guys have infested the whole planet. Oh, no. come on. Jimmy, come on. <laughs> Uh, but this guy, the, the, the last call hey. brought up a good point about the, the... What are our judges anyway? Are they... Like employee, regular employees, are they private contractors? Uh, you really got to well, start exposing. They're, yeah. they're employed by the sanctioning body, the, mm -hmm. the right. state sanctioning body, the state commission. So, what does that make them? Is what I'm asking. 
the well, it's the, they're an employee of that commission. Like that's why okay, they have okay. the patch on their arm. That's the right, sanctuary right, body right. they represent. They're paid um, through them. I I would imagine if they're ten ninety nine, they probably pay their own taxes or whatnot. But yeah, they're still under the umbrella. Meaning their actions could get that sanction body sued. Well, I mean, you know what I mean. Like they're a part of that sanction body. What was the referee in the last? Oh, well, there was a big. There was a big fight where a judge fucked up, and then they somebody ambushed. Well, ambushed him. Some uh, reporter went up to him, and he said, "Well, talk to my supervisor." Like, what the fuck? You can't explain your which fight was that? Was that the Joshua Usyk fight? Yes, the rematch. Yes, uh, I thought you were talking yep. about when I called the guy from the uh, the uh, Sergio Mor uh, Sergio Martinez uh, Paul Williams fight. No, 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 no. Yeah, we remember that story. <laughs> yeah, you're but yeah, you're talking about the it was the Corey Feldman. Or oh, Feldman, right? The guy Corey with the Feldman. thick glasses, tall guy. Right. At the you. end of the Usyk on Joshua fight, yeah, I remember. He, then he goes, up, 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 word salad. Then he, oh, you have to talk to him. And it was so funny. <laughs> it was the one who did that meme. Um, oh, uh, well, you have to talk to the guy I split the money with. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <come on>. Yeah, <laughs> it's, but that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that was these judges... <laughs> A lot of these judges, and you know, people people justify their actions and their shitty scorecards by saying, "Well, they're judges, they're professionals, so otherwise they wouldn't be there." Yeah, but then when you try to question them and and to 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 get them to break down their 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 assessment of the fight, oh, well, you got to talk to my supervisor. Hey, I thought you're a genius. I thought you're supposed to know better than us. They can't even confabulate something and break it down. I mean, come on. Uh, let's go. I don't, to I don't know how they're going to defend themselves with that, but I can say this: um, I was at a card. And I, I did talk to, to a judge, and I didn't get much of an answer out of him. But I was watching a fight with Larry Donald and some guy that wasn't that good. And this was on the undercard to a Will Grigsby card in uh, Fort Lauderdale. And when the fight was over, the crowd booed because they thought that the scores were way too wide because this uh, the opponent gave a good account of himself. But numbers don't add up that way. The rounds may have been close and exciting, but Larry Donald clearly won almost every round there. So it looked like a complete shutout on the cards, even though the fight itself sitting ringside didn't seem that way. Numbers don't give you half points than anything else. It's clear, concisive of this is a 10, this is a 9. And as each round goes on, when it's 10, 9, you're now two points behind, you're now three points behind, now four points behind. And so sometimes when some, some people look at cards going, no, those cards were absolutely atrocious. Well, okay, but how many rounds did you give the guy? Mm -hmm. it, it, that's a good point it, and it comes down to that when when they add up it's not like i'm giving this guy nine and a half points but i'm giving this guy 10 it does it, you can't add it that way and so at the <laughs> end of the day whole numbers keep going and it, it becomes a wider disparity than what the i sometimes see in an entertaining mm -hmm. fight that's a good point that's a good point yeah because sometimes you see fights where it's a competitive fight but one guy one judge scores at 117 111 or something and you go well wait a minute but technically it can happen because it's a competitive fight but what if one judge throughout the fight liked what fighter a did more than fighter B that I could see at once but sometimes people look at it and they go well if it's a competitive fight how come the scorecards so, are so wide 117-111 it's possible but at least we should hold these judges accountable is what I'm saying and to be able to get them to explain Great. while watching the fight that Thunderdome said that too a bunch of times and I wholeheartedly agree we need to but no they, they shelter these judges they shoot them away like they're the president uh, real quick let's go to my <laughs> phone call here Let's go to 424. 424, you're on the air. 424, what's on your mind? 424, you're hello, on the air. Going. Yeah, you're on the air, man. Hey, what's going on? What's going on, BDA? How you doing? Doing fantastic. Oh, is this Puro? Sounds like Puro. Yeah, this is Puro. Yeah, it's Puro. Oh, dale, Puro. What's up, man? Thank you for calling in, man. I just wanted to chime in on the, uh, on the topic. And mm -hmm. I think uh, the answer is uh, we need to get rid of 99.9% .9 of the YouTube boxing community channels. No, start. Hope, I hope that doesn't include us, man. No, 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 no. Obviously, you know, like uh, <laughs> it doesn't include you guys, a couple other channels that, uh, you know, that I might not agree with with, uh, with their takes, but, you know, they're still pretty, pretty entertaining channels. Now, I'm just talking about the majority that literally they buy everything that these... Uh, that these uh, like uh, ESPN or, or other outlets like tell them like like mm -hmm. I don't know how anybody believes that uh, Bud Crawford's going to fight David David Avenesian for ten million dollars. That just doesn't make any sense. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, what else, man? How about the clinching, the judges, uh, any, anything else we might have missed too to fix American boxing? Hello. Yeah, Pudo, are you still there? Yeah. Yeah, I'm still there. I'm still there. It's just, it's just like a little kind of choppy. 
Uh, yeah, so how, what else can we do to fix American boxing? Man, uh, I don't know if it can be fixed, bro. I, I don't think I don't think they care about the state of American boxing, the fans nor the promoters. Maybe maybe even some of the fighters. I mean, that's a dire prediction, right? Or outlook, rather. A very dire outlook. Uh, let me ask yeah, you, man. Pudo. It Pudo, is a dire what? prediction, but it's, it's where we're headed. I mean, like, all these fights that we really want to see, we don't ever get. Absolutely. Let me ask you this. Are you boycotting? Have you been boycotting the PBC events, too? Especially the pay-per-views? Uh, nah. Nah. Uh, me, personally, I'm kind of a hypocrite. That I will say this, like, the, the, you know, like, they don't care. But, like, I love boxing too much that I watch, I watch it all. Should be ashamed of yourself, Pudo. We're supposed to put. We're supposed to all unite here. Yeah, I know, and, 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 and I am. <laughs> I fucking am. <laughs> no, well, like, listen. At least you're being honest about it. I'm. I'm a deviant myself when it comes to boxing. I mean, I, I should have cut it off a long time ago, and yet here I am, still, you know, 15 years later, watching this uh, like a maniac. But hey, it happens to all of us, man. I guess it's a, it's a cool sport when it's done well. Uh, what? Anything else, Pudo? You want to say before we move but on? It's never been done well, BDA. That's why I, I think I, I still keep coming back because, like, literally, this is nothing new. That's a good point. That's a yeah. That's a good way of putting it, man. Uh, hey, okay, hold on. There's a guy in the chat. There's a guy in the chat called Vinny Mac, and he says Pudo is bad for boxing. I love you too, bro. <laughs> there you go. That's that's a classic Pudo. Pudo doesn't take anything seriously, man. You can throw anything at him. He doesn't take it seriously. All right, listen, Pudo. Thank you for calling in, man. Call back next time, man. No, no problem, right, BDA. Peace. Take it easy, man. All right. Uh, he goes to the fights on a regular basis too, Pudo. Yeah, I think he does. Cool. Yeah, I've seen that. Uh, uh, Bruce, Bruce goes. Bruce, if you're still on the in the chat, uh, click on call in or click on the stream here because I want to hear from you. Is there a problem with American boxing? And if there is, how can we fix it? Because Bruce is an old head. He's been watching boxing for a long time, and I'm curious to hear what he's got to say about that. Let's go to mean. In the meantime, let's go to nine oh nine. Nine oh nine. You're on the air. Nine oh nine. What's on your mind? I think um, some things that could help boxing would be to um, promote tournaments for championships. Hmm. Um, also, I I think maybe um, allowing like those extra techniques that are kind of in a weird legal basis, like like if someone like holds someone and gets into the clinch, like Roberto Duran, like they might hold them with one hand but then swing with the other hand. Mm-hmm. And like that type of stuff, and like Tyson Fury will put someone's head down, and like Ali used to do that too. I think maybe even like hammer fist. I don't know. I think it should get reformed boxing a little bit, and allow a little bit more wrestling techniques within it. Like back in the day, back in the day, back in the day. Well, is it pugilistic? Um, pugilism what, in the chat did make a good point about that. He said. I'm sorry. Well, hold on. Yeah, just Pugilist made a good point about that in the chat. Where he says, "Well, some fighters should learn too that if the ref's not going to help you out, then you should be able to uh, fight out of the clinch." And we've said that too before. But I am adamant about the fact that the ref should be the first line of defense. He should enforce the rules, and he shouldn't be picking and choosing when clinching should be allowed. So, but but I do agree with you. Listen, uh, that sounds that's an answer. The one you gave too. I mean, it's uh, better than nothing. But go ahead, Chief. What were you going to say? Sorry. I, I I thought I was misunderstanding of the fact that he wanted more grappling involved in it, which actually goes against the rules t to begin with. And so I wanted to make sure I heard I, I was understanding his point. Um, you're saying that maybe they should let the Ram was really good at, at smothering fighters that were went out working like he did with Ray Leonard. There's a lot of holding and grappling in that fight that Duran doesn't get accused of because he's Roberto Duran. He had so many other fights where he did great things. They forget the fact that he held and mauled and shouldered and did he didn't grab behind the head, but he was still holding the arms and doing a lot tying doing a lot of tying up, which is still holding, which is still against the rules. So there is a, a little bit of hypocrisy there towards fighters. But are you encouraging more grappling to try and to negate the obvious holding? I wasn't sure what your point was. Well well, I would rather there it, like be only clinches in like emergency situations. But I feel like, at the same time, refs um, break it up, and then it like resets the action, and then so there's like a pressure fighter. They have to work their way back in. So it's just like a tiring, exhausting process for like one side of the one side of the equation. Pretty okay. Much. 
All right. So you're not opposed to them trying to work their way out of a clinch if there is excessive clinching. Uh, well, I think they should get like warned and maybe penalized. But uh, okay. if they can work their way out of the clinch, it looks like they're doing it. Then I think just let let it happen if they're getting their way out of the clinch. All right. Well, listen. That sounds uh, that sounds like an interesting thing. Uh, right thank there, you for man. clarifying for me. Yeah. Well, listen. Nine oh nine. We gotta move on. But thank um, you for your call. And oh, go, oh, go ahead. You had something else. Well, I was gonna say like also like someone like Jerron Ennis, who like knocks dudes out pretty fast. Um, I think um, boxing should incentivize people to be more active, especially if you're knocking dudes out like pretty fast. And I don't know. Just so they have like a bigger highlight reel, people see them more, and that gives other fighters that maybe are like of a lower standing a chance to get rated and maybe a big payday. Well, there I you think go. That hey, that's also helps the health of just boxing in general. I agree with that one, man. I agree with that one too, man. Well, listen, nine oh nine. We do have to go, but uh, thank you for your call and call back next time. Right? All right. Take it easy. For sure. All right, let's go to four one zero here. Four one zero. You're on the air. Four one zero. What's on your mind? Four one zero, you're there. Going once, going twice. All right, four one zero. If you can hear me, we can hear you. Call back, all right, man. Let's go back to the stream yard. Amok has something to say here. Uh, something else to add. An addendum. Uh, Amok, go ahead, man. You're on the air. Yeah, I just wanted to say something real quick. Um, maybe trainers need to start teaching their fighters to. Uh, Hit him with a low blow, like a snow core, uh, the Mickey <laughs> Leaf low blower, uh, sleeping scene. Right. Why hit not? him in the dick, you know? <laughs> I mean, that's what people say, right? Like, hey, you gotta I mean, be uh, dirty back. Well. <clears throat> well, I mean, there is the technique, you know? Uh, when they clinch on you, you can make it seem like you're gonna hit him in the chest, and then you just graze him in the dick real quick, you know? That's right, why not? Why not? Right. Punch him in, right yeah, in the dick. Not? A, a foul for a foul, right? You know, like in the Bible, an eye the for an The Bible eye. is pretty adamant about that. You are right. An eye for an eye. Yeah. Although I don't know if it exactly means what most people think, but you're right, man. Fuck it. Fuck. Hit him in the dick. And let's make that biblical, too. <laughs> let's, let's, let's fight so yeah. that we can include that in the Bible, man. Why not? A dick for a dick. Yeah, why not? Yeah, I, I, I'm not exactly what I was saying, but okay. <laughs> well, I think that's what. <laughs> let's go with it. Let's go with it. All right, listen, uh, anything else you want to say, Amok? Uh, no, uh, not for now. Thanks, BDA. Thank you, man. Thank you. All right, catch you in the next one, man. All right, listen, fellas, I got to go to the Pichadul. You guys take over, right? I'll be right back. What? What is that, French or what the fuck? That's, it's uh, Italian. Italian. Yeah. <laughs> it's to the toilet. I got to go to know. Pichadul. What's up? Mr. BDA is from France, not no, from... Uh, French, how do you say from Canada? From the French, French Canadian. Well, is that well? That's where Toro Gardi was from, but he spoke Italian too. So there is a there, there was a pretty big. I don't know if it still is, but there was actually a very good sized Italian um, Canadian um, population there that spoke Italian. So that's why he said, "Yeah, peace could do." That's Italian for this for this okay. shit. Okay. And there, there's there's fighters that 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 enjoy working in close quarters, very much you know inside fighting without grappling. Oh yeah, there's an art to it too. Fight, you know yeah. that. Oh yeah, some of the best fighters are the inside guys, man. Uh, remember the little uh, Hoye? What was his name from Mexico? The little dude who uh, was in the circus. His family yeah. was in the circus. Remember that Mexican fighter? He was a great inside yeah. fighter. Oh, yeah, he would tear you up. And, yeah, dude, he'd get right in your fucking, he'd be chest to chest. I mean, forehead to forehead. Bop, 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 bop. he just split you up because, yeah, they learn how to do it. You know, they, they watch, they can sense when you're breathing. They feel you tense up when you're about to shoot. They can feel your weight pivot. It's a whole nother skill set to learn how to fight the inside. That's a great example because he wasn't really a hard puncher. Oh, he, he was an inside fighter, fighter too. Yep. He just overwhelmed you. Same thing with his son. His son, I mean, he wasn't that great of a fighter. He's, I think he's still active. He's got over 60 fights. He's the guy that dropped Margarito, I think, in Margarito's last fight. 
hit him right on the butt and and mar we'll say what you what, what you will about Margarito if he had loaded gloves or not. I mean, obviously you can't put nothing in your chin. The dude had a yeah, real dude, solid chin. I, I have a hard time with the loaded glove thing because it doesn't. You know what I'm saying? We've talked about, dude. That just doesn't make sense. It, I don't even get like they said they found past or Paris dust. That doesn't like so. Where would so? What did they think it was going to mix with sweat and then turn to like in a cast? Like it just doesn't make sense. That's not how you load a glove. You know what I mean? Like it's so. And, and plus, then yeah. I've heard enough people say that didn't really happen. So and Mar I don't know. And Margarito just made an interview. He made an interview in Spanish, and I I, I think he, he doesn't go about the best way. He doesn't go about about it the best way he can. Be because maybe he's, he don't speak English or he's not articulate enough to get the right people to look into it. He says that the guy took off with the pads behind his back. And we know that dude was shady. I believe there was other incidences where he had done shady things before. I'm talking about Nassim Richardson. So he ran away with the, with the, with the, with the reps. And then later is when they found those trace elements. And if you get caught with that, is are you guilty, or are you either are you, are you or are you not? Wait because a minute. The, 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 the commission was kind of unclear about it. You get do you get punished or you don't get punished? Because you got to slap on the wrist. But if it was actually true, that deems um that's enough evidence to kick you off for good, and they didn't do that. That's so right. That's kind of suspect. Well, you said a scene, Richards. Walked away. That's a fact. That really happened. That's true. Yeah. Trust that. Yeah, that's what happened. Huh? Are you that's kidding true. me? I've said and, it before, and, and, and man. The commission Jesus, Bob Bennett, Jesus, they, they kind of wrecked. And the, and the thing about the commission, they allowed that to happen. The dude to step away with the pads. Listen, Jesus, listen. I've said it. Fuck. I've said it before. What? How can you trust a guy who's uh, he self? He's the self-proclaimed brother, brother in the seam. I mean, come on. That just sounds like a guy that's trying to scam you. But uh, before we continue on that, man, because there was a guy that called in earlier and I couldn't hear him. Let's see if he can hear. Four one zero. You in the air? <laughs> Four one zero, you on the four one zero, you on the air, man. Four one zero, you on the air, man. I think he's having an attack. No, I think he's a, I think he's just having a good time. Four one zero, you on the air, man. What's up? Four one zero, you on the air, man. Come on, man. I heard you there, man. Come on, don't hey. leave me hanging. I'm gonna. Hey. Yeah, go ahead. Hello. Yeah. Yo. You're on the air. Y'all can hear me. Yes, we can hear you, man. Pum pow. We heard you. Pum pow. Hey, this blue. Hey. I heard y'all about that Devin Haney, though. I definitely heard y'all about that Devin Haney. And he do a lot of clincher. Oh. Got to let that be known right now. Devin Haney do big clinching. And this ain't about no race. I'm black. From Baltimore. I ain't feeling that clinching from Devin Haney. None of that shit from Tank and that ducking. It's a whole bunch of bullshit in boxing right now, BDA. No bullshit. How do we fix it? How do we fix it? How do we fix it? Because I don't want to just be the ch complaining all the time. I want like I'm, I want to hear answers from people. Hey, see, that's why you hear, that's why you talk to the public out here. That's exactly <laughs> why you talk to the public, and I'm one of them that's going to blast out here. I ain't, I ain't sugarcoating nothing. And I hear Jimmy. I like Jimmy. I love this show right here, yo. Definitely well, invested you. in this one. Thank you, brother. Appreciate that. Yeah, put my little five dollars down. How I get how how you you say it's a super chat member or something like that? How I become one of them? Uh, I'm not quite sure how the fucking membership works. Uh, I think there's a feature if you go to the main channel. There's some. Uh, there's a feature there where you click on it and there's a badge or something and it says become a member. But like I keep saying, you don't, listen, the phone calls, the thumbs up, subscribing and spreading the BDA gospel, that's all we ask for at the end of the day. That's the most important thing. Hey, yo, that uh, well, is like I, was phony. It was extra weak. I heard you kept asking about that, which I thought about the Hellenius fight and that Hellenius and Wilder, which you thought it was, how you how I thought it was, and that, that fight was whack. Whack. That was just as phony as that Floyd Mayweather fight. That was trash, well, too. Bro, you saw that, right? I mean, while his feet were straight, stood because you know when you throw a punch, all your power is generated from your legs, your midsection, your back. The motherfucker was standing straight up, knees Absolutely. straight, leg locked, and just threw a half an arm punch downward. And that dude looked like he got fucking hit with a <laughs> crowbar. 
<laughs> I'm telling you, dude, right? Oh, it was the man. way he was breathing. It was the way he was breathing. Could tell, that's why I thought yeah, it was phony. Because like, when you're knocked out, dude, you breathe a certain that way. Was like one of the, uh, one like of they almost hum, you know what I mean? I've seen, you know, from I that mean, the like way he fell. The way he fell, I, I, I saw the leg. I'm trying to figure out what's going to happen with this low man, David Haney. What y'all think about that, though? <laughs> Well, listen, uh, Rick Glacier said that uh, a while back he heard a rumor that Haney is going to be moving up to 140 because he can't make 135 anymore. So the way he looked at the way and he did look a little bit uh, disheveled. So there might be some truth to that. I hope. Yeah, he did. Yeah, so hopefully, I mean, hopefully he stays in there he for one more. Hopefully he stays there for one more fight and fights Lomachenko. But even if Loma beats him now, I mean, how, how much of an accomplishment is that to fight a guy who looked... Uh, I mean, he didn't look all that great against Gumbosis, man. Let's just put it down. And again, that's what everybody else says. Hey, he was listen, completely emaciated. So I, I like to hear from Baltimore. You call call about video. tank. I, I need to say props. this. I got to get this off my chest. My head. <laughs> Devin Haney and his father ran so much mouth when Loma was in Ukraine. I'm not trying to hear nothing about that weight draining. Whatever you need to do to make that happen, you need to make yes. that happen. Loma at 135, and he been said that he's staying here. All of that talk that they did when he was uh, when he was over there fighting that war and how he was ducking them and how he just gave the belt away and all of these podcasts I was getting kicked off of them by the way let me let me let me let me throw that out they always put me on time out I get in there get to telling them what really happened behind closed doors nobody wants to hear none of that all they want to hear is nope. oh Devin Haney Loma's over here he lost the to that was the end of Loma to everybody else to me. I'm a Loma fan. I'm not going for none of that. Devin Haney and his father was running way too much mouth. And y'all was on here. Y'all I already know. Y'all know what I'm talking about because y'all was talking about the people that was yep. talking about them. Uh, what was what, what was the girl yep. named Cece and other the, from the other show? Cece yeah, the they Great. Was blasting them on that show. I listened to it. Oh yeah, so terribly. I'm not going for none of that. He can't make weight. No, he got to fight Loma, yo. Them them two fights with George Cambosos. I'm not going for none of that. You gotta see Loma, yo. That was uh, that was a, a great right. series. The Cambosos that's gonna live uh, that's gonna live down the the, the test of time. The the, the Cambosos Haney's. Uh, I hope they, they should do a trilogy. They should really go for that. Just make it happen already. Why not? Can you believe that they was actually talking about making a part three to that fight? Not they better anything. not dare. They better not oh, dare make a God. part three to that fight. Yo, that would be just crazy, yo. Well, well, Absolutely. Yeah, Kim Bosa's no. 15 minutes is up. I mean, it was it was five minutes? But listen, uh, listen. The, the, don't be surprised <laughs> right. if don't be surprised if they try to pull a fast one on us. That's the way boxing goes, unfortunately. I mean, look at the Tyson Man, Chisora. I, I mean, I see it. I see it. I see it coming from a mile away. I've been all inside of the comments, letting people know that he is definitely going to try to move up the one forty to Duck Loma. That's okay. definitely going to happen. <laughs> that's 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 without a shadow of a doubt. He's definitely going to start complaining about the weight. It's it's coming. It's mm -hmm, six mm -hmm. months. So what, the next fight, like, at least six to seven months before we ever going to see you again. We don't know when we're going to get the Ryan Garcia fight and Tank. We don't know what that's going to happen. I don't, I don't even got that happening at all. Nobody sees that happening. This Devin Haney thing and Loma, that's the only mega fight and lightweight that we really even got to look forward to. I mean. Well, there you go, man. If I'm I wrong, mean, yeah. somebody else tell me. What oh. other lightweight fight can we really get that's going to be worth watching? Hey, listen, Garcia. That? Garcia Davis, I would. Ducking. Garcia Davis, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be looking forward to that one. Hopefully, it happens. Now that Tank Davis might be running into some legal problems, they might try to fast track that one to get it out of the way before, if, if he goes away. So, I mean, hey, listen, I hope so. cross your fingers. You never know. Miracles do happen, man. Uh, well, listen. Thank you for your call, man. We do have to move on, but thanks for the kind words and uh, call back next time, Ramen. Right, yeah. Absolutely, man. I'm be definitely calling y'all show, man. I appreciate y'all right. show. Yeah, I love it. Thank you, man. Thank you. And and thanks, were you shadow boxing for, by the way? Were you shadow? Were you shadow? Were you shadow boxing? Were you shadow boxing before you were on the air? No, you. Know, I just get real worked up. That's how I be. <laughs> oh jeez, all right. That's a little disturbing, man. But anyway, listen. Thank you for the call, man. Call back next time. <laughs> <laughs> all right take it easy out there. all right take it easy out there man all right Joe, go in man all right there you go see we were international over here uh
Steve Kim just posted something uh, uh, which is rather interesting. And again, he's been saying it for a while. Uh, he's, he's, hold on a second, where is it? His tweet was, fuck, how can I, hold on, give me two seconds here. It says, actually, let me copy paste it because you can't see it here. But essentially, he's try talking about how are people really surprised in a sport where people completely o overprice themselves? All of a sudden, they're surprised that the Crawford Spence fight fell apart. And uh, again, he himself said it could still happen. That's the plan from the PBC. But uh, okay, here's the tweet uh, that he put. Uh, hold on a second. I'm having difficulty here. Technical difficulties, fellas. Bear with me. My goodness. It says, you're, so you're surprised that a system that routinely overpays its participants wasn't going to run into a problem in terms of making certain fights? Spence Crawford. And then you add in a depleted pay-per-view market? But hey, let's list those UFC purses. <laughs> oh, okay, so, so he's also going after some of these other writers, like he said, who, who are always harping on the, uh, the money that the UFC guys make. I mean, it's true, right? Uh, these fighters being uh, overpaid, overpricing themselves, you, you didn't think this was going to happen once they were actually going to be pitted with the best in their division? I'll tell you right tell now, you. the fucking mm -hmm. MMA or the UFC is kicking the shit out of professional boxing. Oh. And I'm not a UFC guy. I mean, I watch it, but I, I'm a casual to it. But there's no denying he matches consistently matches the best against the best. Always. And sometimes even fucks guys over to make the better fight because he doesn't care. I mean, he's, he can be ruthless. You know what I mean? And he don't care. And he's matching them like that. They all bitch later when they retire. But listen, that's the pinnacle of fucking MMA is UFC. That's the contract. They all fight for. And when they get it, they bitch later. But they're kicking the fuck out of boxing. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to sit here just because I'm a boxing head and fucking lie on behalf of the sport that I'm the one, you know, the sport that I love. MMA is fucking us up in every way possible. It's interesting about but this the way. MMA. MMA isn't dying. No, man, no. And listen, at this point, I gotta wonder because every there's there's people out there too that they have this noble notion of the boxer as this uh, figure that can do no wrong because they step through those ropes and that's a brave act. And I've said it before. Yes, it's a brave act, but the bravery doesn't end once you step through the ropes. Now it's about how how do you handle yourself in the ring. And a lot of these guys, they don't deliver. They don't make the fights even outside the ring. They don't, they, you know, they don't negotiate them properly, or they just don't want to do. Them. They call each other out. Listen, that's the other thing. When Haney, uh, there's these rumors now that, like we said, they're flying around that he's going to be moving up to 140. And there's his supporters are going, well, uh, Loma avoided him, so it's karma. But wait a minute, how did he? Like, Haney called him out. That doesn't mean he sent a contract. That doesn't mean his team actually tried to get the fight done. All they harp on is that the WBC franchise, uh, whatever they call it, which, Jimmy, you've beaten to a dead horse. I mean, you've explained it, I don't know how many times. If these people don't want to well, get it, this they don't want to Check it. out the tweet. This is the tweet I was talking about, right? 35 retweets or quotes, whatever, 95 likes. When Haney was in line, y'all were okay with Loma ducking via franchise belt. Now y'all feel obligated to give Loma a shot. I'd make him play 52 pickup. 140 was to kill it. Haney's position at 135 solidified. Like it or not, you know what I mean? He's undisputed in capital letters. But that's, and again, actually, um, and the Hamanites drilled them. And Steve actually, quote, tweeted laughing about what Hamanites just drilled them with all the facts. But I'm telling you, people it's just in there absurd, there. dude. And that's what they're doing. Ah, uh, man. Well, listen, we do have to go, man. But, but hey, Gonzalo, man, uh, I don't think. You know, when you're talking about, because like, you're the master of predictions here, but I want to see if this extends to fights happening. Do you think Crawford Spence happens in 2023? I think so. All right, there you go, man. I mean, hey, listen. If for that, because it, that that's like, that would be the latest that it could possibly happen without people going up in an uproar. And that's like the tail end of Crawford's prime, 36 years old. I know fighters don't fight that often, so the wear and tear is like lesser. And and they say, well, 30s like the, uh, um, they age, they age, they don't age as, as quickly. Right. I think it will happen next year for sure in the first half of the year. I mean, listen, even if the fight's past its uh, expiration date, you, we, we'd still watch it, right? 
And I, I bet you on fight week, we'd still be pumped up. Maybe not now, because we, we'd be thinking about the bad. But once it starts getting closer, we'd be looking at the good more than anything. We'd be like, hey, it's still a pretty good fight. But I mean, it's got to happen now, man. I don't know what the fuck these guys are thinking, man, really. Uh, but yeah, here's the tweet that uh, Jimmy was talking about. Oh, hold on a sec. <laughs> Having trouble navigating today. It says, Lomachenko versus Luke Campbell. That was September the... F well, you break it down, Jimmy. I don't know if you can see it here on the screen. But let me zoom in for you here. Maybe you can break down the, the timeline here because I'm not all that familiar with it. You do it better, man. Yeah. Um, w w okay, well, what it comes down to this. Loma won the belt, the WBC belt, on September 1st or August 30th, right? 2019. Mm -hmm. September 14th, 14, uh, 14 days, days later... Haney became his mandatory challenger. His mandatory, he was named his mandatory, not mandated, meaning this is the next guy in line for WBC. Ah, it just means okay, the number okay. one. You know, that's all right. But it wasn't a mean, like the WBC didn't mandate the fight. They just said mandatory. And the reason why they wouldn't mandate it, because he had just signed to fight Santiago. So he was literally going into camp when he was named the mandatory. All mm -hmm. right, there you go. So he's now getting ready to fight Santiago. Um... Well, in camp to fight Santiago, um, no, right, right after, no, he won the belt. He beat Santiago um, and, and hurt his shoulder really bad on the November 10th. On November 23rd, 13 days later, fucking top rank, and they got the franchise belt. That doesn't matter because he was already finalizing the deal with Lopez to fight in February, I mean, no, excuse me, end of March or mm -hmm. early April, that fight was scheduled for. I, okay, so here comes COVID, bang, that hit on April 20th, shut down boxing. It prolonged, it's so uh, Lomachenko Lopez, instead of, was that April, remember, it was put up like five months, I was right, so pissed, right. it was put up till that September. So in the meantime, after the Santiago fight where he hurt his shoulder, he went under, had surgery. And he was put on the shelf. The doctor said six to eight months. In the inter, in the well, he's still mending. Loma lost his belt to Lopez. It's a physical impossibility for them to have fought. So the fact that they used that, well, he became well, he ducked him when he was franchised. Okay, when you oh you mean when he was in training camp to fight Santiago, or or, or right after the fight when the doctors diagnosed him with a shoulder bad enough he needed surgery, and then was on the shelf for eight months. And again, that's when Loma lost the belt. So you tell me exactly when they were supposed to fight. And they can't because he wasn't. It's just a narrative they made up to bash a fighter who don't look like them. And that's the fucking bottom line truth. And now, like this tweet, he's using it as an excuse. So when this kid bugs out to 140, well, he avoided value fucking paybacks, bitch. No, dude. It didn't go down that way. Like that way, and all your fucking historic revisionism isn't going to change that. So you kick rocks, fuck ball. No, oh, at okay. least you can call him a shit ball, like Clint Eastwood in that uh, that movie where he plays a, a marine uh, a drill sergeant. I forget the name of the movie, but uh, <laughs> he's got oh, some good lines in that one. Yeah. But uh, where they listen, go to Grenada. <laughs> Yeah, with Grenada, exactly, at the end. But yeah, that's a good... Listen, unfortunately, while you were explaining this, I think a lot of Devin Haney fans just put their hands over their ears and start saying, la, 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 not hearing you. Because, I mean, everything exactly. you just said made a little bit too much sense, man. A little bit too much sense. But hey, I And these are the dates. You, you, they can see the dates. There's a finger pointed to every date. Let so me put the... It uh, could not have happened. There was no talk of a fight happening. There was no contract of it because they were both... One just finished the fight, one went into a camp. One injured himself in that fight. The other one had a fight already signed, lost his belts, yada, yada, yada. It's done. And prior to him being named earlier in 2019, I don't even think he was in the top 10 yet. He was still a prospect. So remember that. Remember, because prior to that, who did he fight? He was still That's really right. a prospect. In fact, everybody was calling him that. Because he got the belt fucking sent to him. So people, you know, because now, now they'll say, well, it was prior to that then. But no. Well, why would have Loma even fought that kid? He wasn't even, I think, the top 10 until maybe January of that year. Other than that, he was fighting other guys. So please. It's just, it's all, it's so far, it's so laughable. It's it just, but the thing, like you said, two weeks from now, someone will call in and say, well, fucking Loma ducked him. <laughs> you know what I mean? And even yeah. if they, you know what I mean? Exactly. It's yeah. fucking, it's like talking to a wall.
It is, man. It's like talking to a guy who drives an SUV into a per Christmas parade. But listen, uh, I, I, we didn't even get to the Polymal and Naji. I, I think we'll get to it on another day. There's no boxing this Saturday, so we might maybe we'll do a special show or something. Although I did have a maybe a sec. Well, we'll try to work something out. Uh, try to fill the void of hey, boxing this weekend. BDA, did you catch? I just got to ask you before you hang up. Did you catch uh, Mr. Russell crying? Did you see yeah, the closing? Saw, yeah, he's opening oh, argument. That's cla all right. Oh yeah, my that God! A, that guy, Christ, crocodile tears. Way, my wife went back and watched the whole trial, the whole thing. She was fascinated; Holy couldn't shit. look away. It was like a train wreck. Hey, when I you started watching about it, it, when I started watching <laughs> the streams, there were thirty thousand people watching it live. The trial now it's up to ninety thousand. I think it almost goes to eight, uh, 100,000 at its peak. So people are starting to pay attention to this trial now. Um, also, like I said, we'll get to the Polyman and Najee thing because he had some choice words to say to Haney back because, like you said, and then again, I don't want to harp on too, on too much because we're about to go, but that timeline that you brought up from Heyman, that shout out to Heyman, by the way, for putting that timeline together to show people that, that that fight couldn't have happened. And what was Lomachenko supposed to do? First of all, like Jimmy said, there's a distinction between being mandated and being the mandatory. It's people don't seem to get that. Number two, what was Lomachenko supposed to do? Fight Lopez, who had already knocked out Comey, at least he had that big win, or fight Haney, whose best win at the time was what Gamboa or, or hey, Santiago? Exactly. And, I mean, and again, he just sense. finished that fight, so when could he? Because he just fought Campbell. And it was 14 days later, and again, that's what they use. It's just language. Like right now, um, Virgil Ortiz as number one in WBC or whatever belt he is, he's Spencer's mandatory for that belt, meaning he's the he's the number one, not the champion. So that's all it was. They just moved um, Haney to number one. So that's when he was named the mandatory, meaning his next mandate. But it wasn't a mandated fight. That's key language. And if you look at the timeline right there in fucking black and white, you can see why they wouldn't have mandated. He was literally entering training camp to fight another fighter, in which time he injured himself while he was healing, Loma lost the belt. That couldn't right. have happened. No matter how you try, they try to spin it. It it just couldn't have happened. So, and, and uh, uh, Paulie Malinaji, what exactly did he say, dude? Well, I'll tell. We'll save it for the next one, man. Because it's uh, oh, okay. I don't want oh, oh, right. to. Two, so three hours today. Okay. Yeah, yeah but no. uh, safe to say, he he said a lot. He finally opened up and said a lot of things that uh, a lot of us have been saying here. But listen, if Haney does move up and we don't get the Loma Haney fight, I don't really care to. I mean, we, 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 they could still make Shakur Stevenson versus uh, Lomachenko. That's still a heck of a fight right there. Might even be a better fight. You never know. So, well, that that's Plan B right there. Now, we do have to go, Gazelle. Anything else you want to say before we move on? No. Yeah. No, it's okay, BD. No, hold on, hold on. I was it was No, it's okay. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry Did you that. just tell your wife she I'm talking to BD? She doesn't know who the fuck I am. It's all you're the best. Yeah, because all the rules. Man. All right, I'm kind of out of it today. Sorry about that. No problem. No, 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 no. Don't right, apologize. All right, man. Well, listen, okay. guys, thank you so much for j j dropping by. I want to give a shout out to, to Chief, too, who was here. Of course, Steve Kim. You got to thank here for dropping by as well. Hopefully, he keeps us updated on the three knockdown rule. Because I want to, I want to, I hope, hopefully, they keep making those episodes. And if they don't, hopefully, they keep making them somewhere else. Doesn't have to be thriller necessarily. Um, but what else, man? So yeah, so shout out to Steve Kim. Don't forget to check him out on snack.com. You can check him out at, at Steve323. That's what it is, right? I always forget. Is it, Yeah, Steve Kim323. I always just look at the... Uh, the He changes his name all the time. Now he's BLK Prime Supporter. I mean, come on. Uh, give, a, give a shout out to Heymanites too for this uh, timeline that he put together. Uh, give a shout out to everybody that don't even do Super Chat. Everybody that called in. Everybody in the chat right now, thank you so much, guys, for, for listening to us. Everybody that called in, kind words. Hope you enjoyed the show. We'll try to be back as soon as possible. Like I said, there's no big fights this Saturday. So hopefully, maybe we'll come back and do some. Maybe, hey, Jimmy, maybe we'll do a standalone episode. Uh, like that one we did about Tank Davis. Remember that video? Where we were talking about the pay-per-view numbers? Oh, yeah. Maybe no, we'll... absolutely. Oh, you know what else? Well, I'll tell yep. you off the air. Uh, and what else, man? Well, yeah, that's about it, man. So, guys, thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. I hope you guys enjoy the, the show. Enjoy the rest of your evening. And we'll catch you in the next one. All right, fellas? Take it easy. Thanks for watching. Peace. Oh, wait, hold on a second. Hey, shout out to everybody in the chat. I'm talking about Mr. Classic one. Metal, Heretic, D-C-A-D-E, Danny Lothar, Fluffy Toaster 89, Some Rando, D-O-M, that's dumb, Javier Flores, Warp, Speed, Pound for Pound King, Pugilism, Ray, 
Hit by the Kua. Who else, man? Hit Killer the like killed. on the way out. Yeah, hit the like on the way out. Uh, Killer be killed. Hashtag CCD. Kevin Fuentes. Egg Beast. Uh, who else, man? Well, if I forgot anybody, guys, you know who you are. Alan R. Thank you so much, guys, for joining us. Catch you in the next one, man. Take it easy. Thanks for watching. What are you going to do about it? Hell, because you got nothing. I got to say. Hell, because you got nothing. You got nothing. I want to get out. I want to get out of this rat hole. I want to get online. I need BDA Boxing.